do a signal from the technician. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. Okay. Technical director gave you this. Good evening. I call the zoning committee to order. Item number two, review the preliminary and final subdivision application lot line revision of RAH Associates for property located at 9983 and 9987 Perry Highway, which is on the eastern side of Route 19. Pine Creek Hill heading toward Wexford. Okay. Bruce, do you want to talk about that? Yes, I do. This is, map uh, just to give you the idea of the location, uh, this is where you start up Pine, Pine Creek Hill, right up coming off of McKnight Road. Uh, Gibson Thomas, the surveying company and the daycare center is located uh, right here. And then the, uh, as you're heading up the hill, uh, there is it's Mercy Behavioral Clinic is the property we're talking about and the storage units. Are on the right side. Uh, right now it is two properties. The property line goes through the middle of the building. I just want to clarify the location for everybody so that they everybody knows. You got a good feel for where this is? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, what happened with this was there was a court case. Uh, at the time the town did not permit storage units anywhere in the town. Uh, and we have to, according to Pennsylvania law, we have to account for all types of uses. That one was not accounted for. And you're talking 1985, right? Uh, I'm not sure of the year it happened I before I got it. I believe so, it's 1985. Uh, Toby says it was 1985. That's right. Yeah, and Mike, Mike Sinker is here representing this development. And so when it was approved by the court, it was approved without any site plan reviews. The court just said, you will approve this plan uh, the way it was presented. Yeah, you being the town, we'll approve the plan the way it was presented. The plan was on two different parcels and the lot line goes right through uh, Mercy uh, Behavioral Health Clinic building. So at this point in time, Mr. Sinker and his uh, partners want to sell the property uh, off uh, this building and uh, the requirement is that this lot line be moved from here to here divides the properties. The appropriate easements and cross easements are labeled on the plan, and it, they've uh, addressed all the technical comments of Gateway's letter. So really all they're doing is just taking the lot line from between, uh, dividing the building in uh, one, one quarter uh, on one, moving the lot line divided two lots as best they can. So that's all it is. What do you a long explanation for something that's very simple. Do they have a plan for what they're putting in there? Nothing. It's already everything's there. All they're doing is moving the moving the lot. And after thirty years. That was an odd court result. That, that's what. I mean, the, the, the history of that is interesting. Yeah, it, it's not. Uh, we we try to avoid yeah. those kind of things. Uh, and it just goes goes to show you what happens when something goes to court. You know? Okay. So there, is there anything else? No, that's it. Are there any other changes that need to be made with that property being sold? They split? made the, every, everything that was, uh, there were a couple of minor comments that had to do with uh, labeling and closure, the uh, mathematical calculations for the closure. That was all submitted in the proof. Which side is being sold? <laughs> the Behavioral Health Clinic. Okay. Is, is there anything else? Nope. Okay. In that case, we'll pr proceed to the next item. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Bruce. Review public hearing okay, held July 17, 2017 on the conditional use application of Richard Gettle, Inc. for a geotechnical engineering and construction company to allow equipment storage on property located at 8443 Perry Highway. This property is located between Gloria Street and West Fairview Avenue north of the Howard Hanna real estate office. We've had discussions on this uh, already with, um, I think it was Mr. Mr. Pagone has, has addressed this be before. Bruce, do you want to add anything? Are you? 
Well, just to, to summarize for everybody, this is a conditional use. And a conditional use re to reiterate what we said at the public hearing and at the planning commission meeting. A conditional use is a permitted use, however, it is permitted with conditions. Those conditions are written into the ordinance. Town Council can add additional conditions if they feel as though it promotes the health and safety of the community by doing so. Conditions cannot be added just so that it makes it impossible for the uh, developer to develop the property. Bruce, I, I, wanted, I, do want, I was going to add the, uh, to this that we, at the, last, uh, at the last meeting when this was discussed, uh, someone, and I don't have recorded here who it was, raised the issue of uh, the, the effect that noise and sound might have on the property. And uh, I was uh, going to invite, if it's appropriate, invite Mr. Pagone to, to address that issue. Are you, can you address that or would you like a little bit of time to get your thoughts together? Do, do you intend to, to do anything about, to control the noise in some fashion or, and or do you perceive noise being a problem at the property? I do not perceive noise to be a problem. Well, can you come up to the mic? We're on, we're on uh, uh, CCTV. We're being taped again. <coughs> Can't escape the problem. It's not oh, ampli You don't need to speak as if it was an amplification. Okay. It's just recording. All right. Uh, regarding noise, um, I have driven around. Could you, you can turn and face both ways so you can make it. The audience could hear you, so if you could pan the room, work the room. I want to get my good side for the camera. You're, you're Actually, the camera's camera, right, or it's, so it's going to get all sides. Oh, wow, right. for real. You're on candid camera. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> no, the noise, literally, if you look at the property, if you drive up the driveway, there's a change in elevation, and the noise is going to be insignificant for the duration of time for the use. And we're going to drive in. The plan is to build an office building and have a storage yard between projects as we've identified before. And the truck would pull in, the size of that lot that we have there is sized enough that the truck will be able to turn in, pull in, pull into the gate, circle around, detach the trailer neck, drive the tractor up, drive the piece of equipment off, park it where we're gonna park it, and then the truck connect and pull back out or and leave. So you're talking maybe duty cycle from start to finish maybe a total of a 20 minute operation. As far as noise goes, there's no noise other than if you happen to have back, have to back it off of the trailer. Some pieces don't, they drive off, some back off. So it's 50-50 shot on, and that's on a drill rig or a, a crane car body. The other equipment that we would park here intermittently would be stuff that has no backup alarm on it. It's like small, smaller drill rigs for different types of uh, work that we do. So. Yeah, wouldn't the, the truck, truck have a backup alarm? The I'm truck sorry? Was, wouldn't the truck that was hauling out have would, a backup yes. alarm? But it's no different than any truck currently delivering on Route 19. Sheets, um, Subaru dealer, you can go up down the road any given day, sit and watch and see what goes on. I've seen fully loaded tanker trucks pulling into a gas station at Sunoco on 19 and Sheets right by where we're talking here. And they navigate the roads just fine getting in there. And with the noise that they put out, for that momentary time period. And it's, again, the equipment will be delivered when I'm there or someone's at the place. So that'll be normal business hours, eight to five. Mr. Pagone, let me, uh, let me apropos to that, this general issue of, of, of sound. The road rises from Route 19 up in generally in the direction of Gloria, right? Yes. It goes up and then it sort of levels off yeah, and then heads down as, as it reaches forest. Is that generally the idea in terms of the, the lay of the land? I think it goes. I mean, I think it goes past to where the new bank is. I think it starts to go downhill there. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Yeah, that's but within the difference. confines of the lot, uh, but is no, it's a gradual, it's a gradual incline on 19, where this. Yeah, I, didn't, what's that, I thought that's what I said. It, okay. it inclines from 19, flattens out, and then it goes down a little bit as it as it gets toward the end of the lot. No, I think it still climbs till you get about the sheets and then it flattens out. So you're, 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 you were talking about his lot in particular, yeah. not, not Route 19. He's talking about your lot. So if you're entering your lot from Route 19, you go up into your lot, right? Okay, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, there's a small grade. I, yeah, there's a small grade. We're talking past from, each other, yeah. From, the, uh, from where the curb cut is currently up to whatever the elevation is. That of course, I know during our discussions, the, the last time we had an opportunity to talk, uh, a dialogue on the issue, there was discussion that the that, that end of the lot was uh, afforded some protection from sound 
because of the way it was configured. That, that, that's, Correct. Yeah, yeah you're going to be back off. Yeah. And again, that's conceptual. You know, we have to stay within the, the setbacks required. But again, you will have some dimensional distance. I'm going to say it's at least 40 feet guessing by the scale in that drawing from the curb back to where the tree line would be and then the fence behind that. So it might even be 50 feet okay, to so the front fence. So because you, you're, you're, in a nutshell, you're saying you don't believe that there's anything unique about the activities that are going to be happening on your property that would distinguish it from, from other trucks and vehicles up and down 19. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to be, you have to realize when this equipment runs on a job site, on a construction site, you are going ahead and you're, you're running it at full torque, four speed, getting the production out of it. You're literally not in an idle, but almost an idle, unloading it and parking it. Mm -hmm. So you have two different noise criteria, I'd say, as far as what you would actually hear. Now, if I took you to a job site and you saw it working, you would say, oh yeah, it might be pretty loud. But again, people are working here and we have a sheet of all different equipment we have in the decibels that puts out when it's working at peak performance level, so to speak, because of protecting the workers. So this is really a negligible sound. And how, how, how tall is this? Uh, are, are these uh, trucks? What's the tall? Uh, the equipment. Yeah. How, how? The biggest piece is a would be an 80-ton crawler crane, and the car body, the part that the guy operates in, sits in, and tracks in the car body. You know, that truck's over the road on a drop trailer, and so it's going to be a 13-foot-6 bridge we have to go under. So I'm going to say it's maybe a 10 to 12 foot height, and um, I have photos of some of the equipment that could possibly be parked there intermittently. And I'm not sure if any of these are the ones you're. Oh, this. this one you're about? No, that's a smaller one. It might be on the second set behind that. Bruce. What's the tallest okay, possible piece of equipment? It's the uh, track equipment, right? Yes, they're all track. Everything we have is track. The tallest piece of equipment. It's kind of a misleading question because you have the car body. Um, if we could look to the picture, it'd be better to explain it. Uh, right where the upper right. So those are drill rigs. Can, Neither everyone, can everyone see the, the rendering here? Photos? Maybe it'd be best to pass this around. Can we do that? Yeah, I was going to ask him a question. No room. Okay, when I say car body, I'm talking about this piece or this. This is the car body. There it is on a tractor trailer. And how high is it? So <coughs> if you unloaded that and so parked it on the ground. Tractor, it looks like. If you unloaded that and parked it on the ground, the fence, for the most part, other than maybe if the operator were to put the boom up a little bit, the only thing you'd see is the boom. These drill rigs here, the mass that you see up and down, they lay back and stay stored that way. So you would only see, if anything, the top parts of the car body. This drill rig, the way the manufacturer recommends that, that is how it has to be when it's parked. So if you could envision there being a 10-foot or 6-foot fence here, you know, what, wherever that would fall in, you would see that much of it sticking up. So the people from their homes behind there are go going to see this? No. Well, how, you, how are uh, they not going to see that big thing sticking up in the air? They drop down. There, there is a significant change in elevation. There's a significant depth of wooded area here. Even when there's no trees, they they, they may be able to see it in the fall when there's no trees, maybe. If they no get leaves. Out the no leaves. Are, no leaves. No leaves, sorry. Yes. Um, <laughs> But there is um, at least a hundred foot thick wooded area here. So one of the houses is abandoned. There, it, it, it's such a difference. The only way to appreciate it, I think, is to drive it and go look and try to find the houses and where they are and drive onto the property. Ralph, does that thing that's sticking up that looks like the, it looks like a crane? Because I guess it is a crane. This, does that fold down? When it does it's for transporting. Well, a, this particular, if we wanted to park this yeah, one like it is here. You have to put it that way. That's the way you have to park that particular one. It has to be parked pointed up in the air? Yes. This one you don't. It can stay back, lay back, because this telescope's back and transports flat, parallel to the ground when you drive over the road. Okay. My next question is, um, will any of these pieces of equipment be backed out onto 19? Absolutely not. There's no reason in the world they should be backed under 19. You know, every, everything will show up on a truck like this, It'll get unloaded within the confines of, where'd it go? So picture pulling in, pulling in, looping around, detaching, moving the tractor, crawling it off and parking it wherever we want to park it in that footprint of that area. And then reattaching, pulling back out and going whichever way they need to go to get out of there, you know, wherever the next destination is. I believe you said that uh, at the most, at the general business meeting, I think you said that there 
there'd only be six, at the most, six pieces of equipment parked at any one time. Correct. And so could we put a limit? The, the uh, Planning Commission has no limit, and uh, I, I would like to see a limit of maybe six or whatever you think it is. Well, again, I go back to some other questions. You're asking, you, you want to limit me on yeah. what I can do. My company is looking at making a significant investment in doing this. We've been running office space for 15 years. We want to have our own place. So would we ever park six pieces here? I have no idea. I mean, it just depends how busy we are and where the work is. If, every, if we have jobs in a perfect world, all of our equipment's lined up to go from job to job to job to job, and we never bring it back and park it anywhere. Six pieces, you know, what if I have to bring a seventh piece back for a week or a month? You know, do I have to ask someone permission? I think, I think it's too limiting, to be quite honest, if you were to do that. And in fairness to us, we're talking of sinking one and a half million dollars into doing this project if everything goes perfect. Uh, with site development, land acquisition, and building the building, and building the buffer yards and the fencing, and so on and so forth. So is there any limit, any limit you can uh, set in your, in your mind? I think 10 or 12, I mean, I think you go higher. But again, we're not, I, I think everyone has this false perception. You have to realize, uh, has anyone looked at my company's website, just out of curiosity? Okay, I, Mr. McKim has. Anyone else? I mean, so you're going to make a decision. My company, well, I'm a little slanted because I've been working there 21 plus years. We are one of the top companies that do what we do. Okay, we're employee owned. We have pride. We just went almost three years without a person getting hurt on one of our job sites, which you might think, well, geez, you should never get hurt. And we agree with that. But unfortunately, accidents happen in construction. So we've gone two and a half years with a zero OSHA reportable incident, which is almost unheard of for what we do. That being said, you know, we are not going to come in here and do some half-hearted effort to making this be our office. You know, I started working for this company and I worked out of my house till we leased an office space. We actually worked at a place in Robinson until the gentleman I replaced retired and then we moved it to my house. Then we moved it to various rental loca or lease locations. Well, the, num the number of uh, pieces of equipment is going to be also a function of how big they are. Uh, you know, everything, every, it's like six is, is, is a number, it's, they, they may be, uh, and I, I guess I'm an advocate in your position, you could have smaller, you, you could have nine or ten pieces of equipment if they were smaller, right? Correct, but the biggest equipment we own, we would yeah. never want to bring up here, okay. because it's so big, and we wouldn't bring it here. Its home base would be back to Cincinnati, so the, the drill rig you see on the front of that picture <coughs> is one of our bigger rigs that we used on the PNC Tower job downtown, and that would never go to this yard because it would go back to Cincinnati because that's where it needs to be. Um, the next job I could get in Pittsburgh could be five years from now with that particular machine. By contrast, this smaller drill and this smaller drill, I can keep pretty busy up here. So they are more compact and more small, other than, again, manufacturer said you store that one with its mast in the air as opposed to laying back over itself because of the hydraulics in the design. Well, I can say that I can appreciate that you are thinking about putting a building here in McCandless and you know we would be pleased to have you but my main concern are the citizens who live around that what they're looking at from their homes that's what bothers me I understand that I live around this particular piece of land too I've driven past it a long time it's sat the way that it is for well over 15 mm -hmm. years and the bottom line is we've been looking there's a fit we're allowed to do it per the <coughs> Planning Commission <coughs> rules it's an approved use with uh, conditions, conditions. Thank you. So, you know, we're we're not going to abuse it, but I think saying six pieces of equipment. Oh, I was, I was just I mean, quoting I, you. I, I don't, mean, I don't know, I don't know what would be a right number two yeah. to be quite honest. I, I really yeah. don't. Well, it's limited certainly by the size of the Absolutely. area that you have to put it, and it depends on the size. So, I think we already have said, and it's a requirement, is that it has to be. Everything has to be stored within this area, yes. and that coupled with the which area is that? Is that asphalt? A little large gravel? rectangle. This is his request is it to be gravel because asphalt would get torn up with the tracks. Right. Uh, and uh, the other part of that is that it will still have uh, oil recovery system built into the stormwater management system uh, if it gets that far. Uh, that'll be a requirement, but. The requirement of the ordinance is that everything be stored within this, coupled with what Mr. Pagone just said about uh, everything's going to be going around, uh, there isn't going to be any backing onto 
that, that Mrs. Powers brought up. There won't be any backing on the Route 19. So the amount of storage is going to be limited by his ability to meet all the requirements that, that we have already set. Well, he said he will not bring this big rig up here. What is right. to prevent him uh, from what, doing what, so? What, 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 yeah, what, what's to prevent him from doing it? And he told us uh, six, six was the maximum number he would need at the meeting. Mm -hmm. And now he's... Uh, uh, he's uh, equivocating. Uh, yeah, he's equivocating. So what, what can we, what, how can we protect ourselves? That, 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 that Any the, suggestions? What's the maximum you'll ever put in there? Well, he's telling you he doesn't know. I know yeah. that. But it's, listen, it's what's not the maximum you could put in it? Probably realistically a small drill rig, a small crane like the one on that truck on the bottom, the car body. Um, some small high back anchor drill or drills, a skid steer maybe. It's on this one here. That's one of our small, it's a 45 pounds small crawler crane. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, that, that's the honest answer. We're not going to make this a storage yard. Again, we're a contractor. We're not an equipment rental house. We make money when we're out working, not parking equipment on a piece of land we just invested in. Um, so I don't know. And then I go back to my question. If we say six is the number of 10, and I want to honor that, what do I do if I want to bring an 11th piece in? Because we have a one month period between job X and job Y. What do I do? What's my condition on that? How do I trigger that for that one month? If we happen to have 10 pieces parked or whatever the number is. I would be more concerned about the large crane showing up than the 10 pieces of equipment showing up. Uh, this being primarily a storage lot, is there even any revenue other than property tax on the, it, to the? It'll be an office also, there's an office. Down, so would there be any the road, revenue for road. it or? Right, the office the, down the road. No, the he's office right. is, no. the office is the part office of the. Is part but of he's the going to do that now that you're going to do, I right. thought you said in the future you're building an office. Oh no, no, this is, this is the entire plan. I want to move out of where we are, but we're not going to do it till the building's done and we can go in and like building a new home and moving into it, this will be our new home in Pittsburgh. Is that the billing office? No. But that may change. So, is this is this won't be a place where there would be revenue coming in? Well, you get as far as a from business the sales that we do in the town already, I'd have to pull it out. But it is broken out that way. There's something we paid at the time. I don't know what it is. So I have to ask my CFO. At your last presentation you said that the fence along the front of the building was going to be similar to the, the fence uh, out here McCandless uh, on our property mm -hmm. which to me is very see-through what what are the trees planted in front of that fence uh, and how how far apart are they planned to be placed to, to help block some of this well the fence is a privacy fence which I assume when that was new it was. I don't know if weathering and age made it look the way it does now. I don't think so. I think it's... Well, I don't know. I didn't put it in. Always been see-through. So, privacy fence to me means it's limited to see through it. So, if that's not a privacy fence, then you won't be able to see through this more. Plus, the bushes over here... So, I without the bushes, the we won't be able to see through it. Correct? Pardon? If, if there were no bushes in front of it, we still wouldn't be able to see through it. It's a chain-link fence with privacy screening. I don't know what the opacity is. So you can is see through, through them a little bit. I don't know what it I don't know what the opacity is looking through it. I mean, again, that will manifest itself when we get to site development if we ever get there. And I don't know what's out in the world yeah. of privacy fences. I was just gonna suggest that we, we may want to look at something different. Uh, right, a little bit nice like even P V C solid vinyl or something. Yeah, get it seems like a strange place it, to have a, it doesn't look a like chain a nice link thing privacy to look at. fence. But, I mean, I'm being realistic. I drive by there yeah, every day. Yeah, we want to, if, if they have a 10-foot, uh, the 10-foot request was a 10-foot gate and 10-foot along the front. Uh, the rest of it's not as critical as driving along the front. So, planning not, commission talk at the time. Normally, we don't even allow things 10 I thought the front was... We, we can, in this circumstance, as a condition, we can require it. But if I wanted to put a 10-foot fence in front of my house... No, you can't. You're, you're in a residential area. So yes. It doesn't look good. But I don't know that it would look any worse here. The, uh, Bruce, is it's, the, it's, it is an option that we have uh, under the ordinance. Do I understand this, Bill, that um, 
that because this is this meets the zoning that we were what our decisions here are not on whether this company comes or doesn't come but it's what the stipulations are to allow them to come is that what I'm understanding the conditional uses is that what I'm understanding? The conditions that are in the ordinance. If he follows everything. Is it, this is okay. a permitted use with conditions. There are, there are okay. several categories in our ordinance. Permitted uses, okay. conditional uses, and some special exceptions. So we're not voting whether he comes or goes. We're just deciding what conditions we would agree to allow him to be there. You, you are hearing primarily, well, from the applicant, but also you're hearing confirmation from the land use administrator whether he has met the conditions that are stated in the ordinance. Our engineers have been doing so forth. So, to this point, are you aware, Bruce, of any condition that he has not met? No, he, he's meeting the conditions. Now, uh, that question being answered that way, his business about the fence, for example, uh, at the time of site plan approval, uh, would the town, I'm asking you a question, would the town have the authority to say this uh, slatted kind of uh, somewhat opaque fence? Uh, is not what we really want in this district. Do you think we'd be allowed, if you need time to study that, that's fine with me, yeah, but I, would we be able to require, as part of the conditional use, a solid fence? My opinion is, and Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, the time to do that would be now as a part of the approval for the conditional use. Mm -hmm. Once it's approved as a conditional use, then everything that's, that's, that's in the conditional the use, right. approval right. is what he has to follow. So I, it can't go beyond that. I would, yeah, suggest, plan I would suggest yeah. to council, sure. uh, with, with uh, Bruce's knowledge, because uh, he's the land use administrator under the law and, and our charter, but as manager, I suggest that you require a solid fence. Now, you don't have to, you, he doesn't have, you don't have to stipulate whether it's plastic or metal or whatever it is. But, but it shouldn't think, look commercialized, in my opinion, no, across it, the front. Right, I agree with you. You know, everyone, if, if for the audience, sake of the audience, too, this is uh, a district that was created as a result of a lot of thought, uh, looking at what has been there, what has grown up over time. It, and the zone district that, that came into being is called the Residential Commercial District, RC, recognizing that there is a mix, mixture of residences that are still along Route 19. Uh, some are duplexes, but most of them are they're still single family homes. But none of those could put a 10 foot fence up. And it depends on what. This particular use, now this use is allowable, this storage use is allowable. Right, but the next door district. neighbor in the exact same position wouldn't be allowed to put the fence up. He could, yeah. That's what I'm saying is we can require it as part of the condition. If the next door neighbor wanted to do it and he met the requirements, he could go to the zoning hearing board. And Even if that. he was a residential house? Uh, the idea is to separate. Uh, it's mostly for commercial use. And this is a commercial district. As well. But if I lived there, I'd want a sound barrier if, I, if that was my house. Well, that's another subject, I think. Yeah, there the aren't any tonight. residents living here. Right, but if there was a house right next door, he would, do something, right. would have to, something. it wouldn't be able to get necessarily this 10 foot fence right. in place, even though he lives right next door and isn't worrying it exactly the same but way. The point is, I, I'm trying to make is that if, if a fence is going to, the fence is part of the requirement, which it is, right. then uh, it, this is a somewhat of an industrial use, I'm being kind, and uh, it's, it's in its zone acknowledges that that's okay, but it, it's also acknowledging that there are folks who live in this district, so if someone is going to put up a fence, it should be more, it doesn't look quite so commercial or quite so right. industrial. Exactly, yeah, so that's... This used to be all old houses, all houses used along to be. there. At one point in time, that was all. Wasn't this a real estate agency? Or was that yes. Ken's yes. house? One next to I think that was probably Ken's house or Rand's house. I still have some trepidation about those turning movements coming in and off the highway. Well, Ralph, as you were you were a former dr a truck driver and a, a drove a fire truck and other big rigs. You know as well as I do, just like they had problems up at Barrels bringing an auto carrier in off the highway. You're going to jam up these these tractor trailer rig. Look at the size of that. That's got to be what, 60 feet long and uh, 70 feet long. They're going to have to like the the Dave Dudley record says, give me 40 acres and I'll turn this rig around. He's, you're going to have the same right that lower right rig. He's going to have to take up up at least 
three lanes of traffic in order to make that turn into your property. That was the point I made at the last meeting. Which may, right, which which in, which has impacts the northbound lanes of the highway as well as the southbound. And in order to do that, he's going to have to slow down. You'll hear the brake uh, retarders and all that kind of stuff to slow down to to make that turn in there without doing damage either to the vehicle or the property. You're going to end up you're going to end up blocking traffic and making for another uh, traffic situation like we had up, up up at Barrels before they built that access road behind it where they bring in the autos now. So, you know, to me, I say, you know, even though you're going to you're going to meet everything and we're going to have to pass this, I'll, I'll just I'll just I'd just like to go on record as saying we're going to have another traffic impediment by those large vehicles pulling in and out of that location. Mr. Percone, what's the, what's the, uh, if you can answer this, the expected frequency of movements such as Mr. Ladon is uh, describing there? Well, I'd like to clarify a few points he made first. Go ahead. Frequency, I, I have no idea. Yeah. It could be once a month, once every three months. It will not be once every week. You know, our jobs, you have to realize our construction projects, you know, we're getting ready to do a job in Mount Lebanon. It's going to be eight to ten weeks. So, you know, the drill rig that's going to go there is this drill right here. It'll be on that site probably a month, a month and a half. And it'll go to the next job. And then it'll go to the next job unless we have to park it. Then we'll come here to the States and we have to take it out. Um, so, again, frequency, you know, we bid work competitively. We have competitors. We bid uh, plans and specs. We bid design build. So, the frequency of my ability to sell the work dictates the, the equipment and how much we're going to go in and out. But if you compare other large trucks, you know, you referenced the, the car dealer. You know, I've seen many a car carrier on my side of 19 past the dealerships going down, turning around, and, you know, blocking traffic without incident. They do it, they go back up to the Subaru dealer. Um, you reference a Jake brake, you know. Our trucks don't, you know, you have to realize we're between two red lights where you're not going to be picking up a lot of speed, yeah. where you're going to have to slow down and require a jake brake. It's not going to make noise. Those are on triaxles and trucks like that or over the road right, without a big change in grade. That's not applicable here. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that because pull up that thing that you have can in, I, in Can your I finish hands? my thought process to his point, please? Certainly. Um, when you also go and if you approach the property from southbound versus northbound, it's a different turning radius. You know, we're going to make this entrance big enough so that it is one time in that we don't have to do exactly what you just said because of the traffic. So. Well, this I want to see. Well, <laughs> it'll be on, it'll be on the site drawings. It'll show you the truck. It'll show you this in a plan view, turning one way or the other way. It's we require, if you, if you know, we require turning radiuses uh, on the plans when they do it. So that's one of the things we'll be looking at. What are we going to do with stormwater? Stormwater, uh, there will be a stormwater plan. I, I think we had a... I uh, saw it on the land the development stage. We're, we're getting on that, 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 that is discussed at the land development stage. There is a stormwater well, plan. I think we ought to know it right now. I mean, we do it on site development. If you recall, didn't we have some problems with stormwater there that we had to run across the other side of the road? The other side of the road puts it in the girders around the watershed. Right. Goes down this way and over the back. It's it doesn't go down. No, will not go down the back. The one you're talking about was uh, was uh, auto the photographers. Zone. Auto. No, the photographer goes forward. Auto zone goes to the back. Auto it, zone goes to the back, but there's one goes. To the oh, other. all the other ones go to the front. And down into Gertie's Run. Yes. Across Route 19 and into Gertie's Run watershed. So, so we're all aware of that. And, you know, there, what are we going to do to prevent oil and diesel fuels? There will be a separator. That's already, we discussed that before he even started this. That was one of the first things we told him that he's going to have to have that uh, oil oil separator put into the stormwater. But he's putting in permeable soil there. There will be a, Ralph, did you want to answer that? Do you know more about it? How to? We, we have the same set up in our main office in Cincinnati, our main yard in Cincinnati. There will be a wa oil water separator so that it goes if back into and it's filtered and captured. Um, there, there will be an imper impervious material 
for lack of a better be word, a underneath the gravel. Under, under like impervious material yes. underneath the gravel. Yes. Correct. And then the water won't pass through there. Correct. It, well, it will pass through there. Um, again, it's not designed yet. I don't have the drawings to show well, you yet. Well, I'm just, but I'm just bringing this up because it's, you know, once we approve this. I can't back up. Right. Well, now let, let's let. Yeah, we can. No. That's not she part of our approval tonight. Exactly. Or that won't be part of our approval. That is a requirement of our site planning. It has nothing to do with the conditional use. So Bruce, we, let's take a minute. We can do we, that. We've, we've held uh, con uh, yeah. Councilwoman Zachary right. off. Uh, Kim, go ahead and make your question. If you'll hold up that one right in front of you. Um, I actually went to that property and drove onto that property. And coming right out of that driveway, which you'll be coming out of, this to sure. the north is uphill and it comes over a hill. Mm -hmm. We had a difficult time actually pulling out of there because cars were coming over Traffic, that hill. That's what I cars said. were coming over that hill so quickly that we had to turn a little um, gravel to get out of there quick enough for the cars coming over that hill. If we do have, if we do um, do this, it seems to me that maybe we would need a yellow flashing light at the top of that hill to, so that when people come over that hill kind of briskly and then there's some big piece of equipment out in the middle there maybe there's a flashing light or something to let them know yeah i came out of there this is the one we will abandon this one and this one and it'll get filled in so there's actually three driveways mm -hmm. currently on that property that's the one that, this will be the main one that's, that's, the, widened. One. that's the one this that is the I, one i've pulled in and out of every time i've been on the property to meet mr dixon to meet anybody on site for the testing we've had done to the house and things like that mm -hmm. i have never had a problem pulling out of this Ever. You have great line of sight looking up to sheets. You have great line of sight looking past Pizza Roma to pull out. So I don't, I don't, shoot, I don't have the same fear that you do pulling out. You know, as long as you're clear both ways, you have lights that are controlling the flow. And I don't think it's far enough for people to fly a great distance if they're going light to light. But I can't control the motoring public. You know, in that regard. I just don't want people to come over that hill quickly. Um, it did take us a while to pull out, mm -hmm. um, and people came were briskly coming over that hill, and they were, you know, kind of on you, on you quickly. So that's what I'm concerned about. They're coming over that hill because they can't see, and then there's something big moving slowly right in front of them. So I'm concerned about that. That's why I thought maybe a flashing light or something. To answer your concern, or everybody's concern is that this will require. Toby just reminded me that. This will require a new HOP, and Ralph's already discussed that with uh, PennDOT. So, all the planning for, for that for his type of use will be addressed by PennDOT. And that means that PennDOT will say, "We'll do what? What kind of signage would have to what, be? Yeah, we can make recommendations, which okay. you're starting to do, obviously, right okay. now. So, but uh, I think the biggest part of the recommendation that we would want to make." And uh, going back to what Mrs. Power said earlier, is that we don't want people backing out. We don't want any of his equipment backing onto the road. I, I really think to assure everybody uh, that, that the, I think we should add the, so far two conditions. One would be that a solid fence to the satisfaction of the town council be installed. And secondly, that no backing of equipment will be permitted on Route 19. Yeah, so the very high rinks, not, not, not stored, stored there. Okay, well, the, the one, when you, when you say that, we clarify, the one that, which one is it? This one down here. Color down here. Well, it was a little one, actually. Mm -hmm. the one. This is the one that would stick up, so you didn't yeah. mean yeah, No, I didn't mean that one. You meant the big one that Ralph's right. talking about that he said won't be up. Well, it won't be up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. somehow we should. Can we clarify it by tonnage, perhaps? Like, we want to have a, what's it? By the weight of the drill? Yeah. I mean... Is there, there's a way to do it. This is your area of expertise, so you could help. We don't so need you to can help them. yourself and help us specify the, the, the rig that the large rig would not be exposed, so whether it's by tonnage or whatever. If you could help us with that, that would be some good wording we could put in the uh, in one of the conditions. And Ralph, would you would you mind just like <laughs> satisfying me a little bit? Tell me again about behind. The back of the lot. What it what's what's it going to look like to those houses back there? Now I know what you're saying that there there's ground or whatever, but it just bothers me that those houses are back there. There's this property line here. Okay. So I'm going to just imaginary line here, here, here. 
Right. And there is a temp there's an easement through the land to come through here right. that Mr. Dixon in had with Hannah when he sold that land to him. So that technically we could access here if we ever needed to. So there's three houses to the best of my understanding. One, two, three. Right now it's tough to see them. One looks very I don't know if they're all currently being lived in or not. One could be abandoned. I'm not positive. But this dimensional Gloria. distance is at least a hundred irrelevant. Feet. Is that Gloria? And it's a significant no. elevation change down. down that well, it's forest. Oh, where's where's forest. Gloria on that map? Oh, Gloria's right the here. Top, right. Okay. okay. This is Forest right. Avenue. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, they're there. To your point, heavily wooded area, very mature trees. Um, the fence required by plant uh, the buffer yard in addition to this. So more trees in front of trees. And a six-foot fence in front. I don't know if it's in front or behind of the buffer. It's been within the buffer. within the buffer. So you're going to have those in place already. And I don't know the elevation of the folks at Forest compared to 19, but it is a. This land drops. It falls down. If everybody under, remembers what Glory is the like, there's a significant like drop, drop off there. Right. I'm going to say it's at least 20 feet, maybe probably more than 20 feet by the time you get to the houses. But, but if the neighbors did complain for some reason, say say the uh, the leaves are off the trees and, and they, they complain because they see something they don't like, could they could we then could you then uh, based on complaints build a uh, a fence a ten foot fence a solid fence? Put the fence After I've just put a six foot fence in, I mean, oh, what, we're gonna, there's going to be a six foot fence across the back. Plus there's going to be there's going to be two fences in the front. There's going to be two buffer yards. So you have wooded area of at least 100 feet or more, buffer yard, fence. I'm sorry, there's no rear buffer yard because of this. And then another fence here at a higher elevation because it's this sits higher, this drops down. This is from here back to forest is sloping downhill. If you figure glory at the steep hill that it is, yeah. this land does very similar. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. There's telephone lines on there. Yeah, but they don't have any elevations on them. I looked. Don't they? I could see. There's 11. Right, there you go. Oh, they do. How about that? I can see okay, from now, here. Well, let's go to, let's take the one, the closest house, which is right here. And these are twos, I believe, as I recall. Two, four, six, eight, yeah. Yeah, we're two So feet. these are twos. So here we are at, at, the house here, we'll say, we'll pick it, the house being here. We got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 22, 24, 26, 28 to the property line. And then you come up one. This is 1234 is the path for the storage garden. Well, that's 1234 so, plus you have all we're these. 1190. So we're 40, 40 40 feet difference. 44 feet difference between the location of the uh, of, of the back fence to the the house, which is directly behind it. I wouldn't even think that if you put a 10 foot fence on that backyard, the house could behind it could see the 10 foot fence. If there were no trees, more than likely. Well, they that would be tough. I, yeah, I, I, I mm, see what flattens you're out there. Yeah, you know, you're going to look up the hill and then that flattens. Right, right. You got a good point there. That's, that's Do you know how many wells we have down there? Oh, I, th I think there probably all were wells. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if they're all still wells or not, but hmm? I know that there were some others. I, mean, I just don't know. What are the decibels that the, the vehicles make? What, do you know what the number is? The truck when it's idling or the drill or the crane when I, it's idling? I mean the, the, the loudest noise that would happen at that site. Do you know what, what it is roughly compared to like what our noise ordinance is? No. I would have to say it's not anything greater than the noise ordinance. I don't know. What our our noise ordinance, noise ordinance does not decibels. specify decibels. But we're, we're familiar with the OSHA. Which is 85 decibels, Mr. McKinnon. For hearing protection, 85 decibels. Uh, and that's for, yeah, that's for what period? That's for a certain that's a period. Duration. Eight hour time weighted average. Yeah, right. No, so uh, none of that will happen. So we don't have a we don't have a decibel letter in our order no. a number. Really? No, it's 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 uh, written it's written subjectively in the police review report. Okay, what other discussion do we need here? We we've, we've gone on. Quite well, a bit. Is there more that we have to discuss yeah, I on think that? What we have to Let, let's let's revisit the the, uh, the, no, the noise for a second. The uh, the noise ordinance was written deliberately years ago to be somewhat subjective because noise is in the ear of the beholder. 
years. And uh, the, the idea was so that if someone was offended by someone's uh, party noise or drilling noise or whatever kind of noise, uh, the police were not going to act with a decibel meter. Over the years, though, we have discussed uh, considerable length whether we should have a decibel rating. But uh, what, what, what's been accomplished is that uh, the way the ordinance, if you, if the ordinance is not part of zoning, it's a health, safety, and wealth ordinance. So if you are basically becoming a nuisance, the police can make a determination based on the criteria of the ordinance. It's general criteria. I mean, we, again, we, we thought about it over the years many times. Should we recommend a decibel level? Or not? And not having a decibel level to me sounds like you might get a ticket today because the night before the officer drank a little more than he would have next week, but you might not the next week because he doesn't have a headache at that moment in time. Well, is, is that an option for us? That this is, seriously. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're on to something there. It certainly is, encourages extreme subjectivity. As to, well, I mean, there, 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 are, there, are, there exist, well, just hang on a second. There exist audio dissimilars, technical uh, measurement, uh, things that measure sound level, standard sound level meter, the level at which the sound is, and it, and it, and it, and it, is, it, it is a number. When council visited this the first time, it's been years, I can't remember what year the ordinance was passed, it was, but it's been within the top time that I've been here. Uh, well, that's 30 years, Toby, right? I know. I do. But uh, council uh, chose not to do that because of, when the council got into the discussion about where do you set the decibel rating, uh, they started seeing what the numbers were for what 85 decibels means or 100 decibels. It got to be very, to them, uh, difficult. Okay. So it's food for thought. Yeah, I think if, if it's something to be revisited, we'll put that on the list. Well, let's look at it in terms of this, if we, if, if we, in terms of this project specifically. What is the peak? Two things we've got to look at uh, in terms of sound from a public health perspective. We have to look at the peak sound level, right, which also has damaging potential for damage, and we also have to look at duration. So we have to look at those two things. We have to look at above the ambient sound level. So we have actually three things to look at. So it's we have to, if we're going to have any kind of ordinance, we got to look at. Bill just pointed out 85 decibels over an hour average impact time. So uh, hopefully we won't have that here. Although I believe a lot of the new lawnmower, or a lot of the older lawnmowers are more than that. I think they're in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Right. The, his equipment is not going to make any more noise than the road noise already. Exactly. So that, I, this well, is that's probably... Well, that's what we asked him, but he didn't know that. He didn't tell us No, I was, mean, so I, I, I can know. pretty much tell you that construction equipment's no louder than Perry Highway. Uh, and he doesn't, he, he doesn't operate between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. Right, so, you know, I don't know how big of a, th this is probably the wrong place to be discussing this, but this should probably be discussed for other reasons in the future. Exactly. Because Toby keeps so, turning his radio we, up too loud or something. If we want to do it, He's back at if the we want to do it with Ralph, we ought to look at the two criteria that we looked at, the duration and the peak period, because I think there is a requirement for the backup alarms to be a certain decibel level, which I believe it seems to be 85 uh, decibels, if I'm not mistaken. Do you remember what the decibel level was? Backups? I don't, but we shouldn't be backing up that long anyway. Yeah, so I, we certainly won't go for the 85 decibels over an hour period, for sure. Well, it's an eight-hour time weighted average, but that's beside the point. Eight-hour time. I, I, eight I can't hours. believe anybody's going to back up long enough. To right. <laughs> They're going to back it up long yeah. enough to get it off the tractor trailer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Are there other Once a week for five minutes. Is, totally is there anything different. else that we ought to be discussing? I, I, yeah, I think Toby had the idea of let's summarize what we've talked about, and then I think we ought to get with Ralph and establish the conditions that are going to satisfy him. All right, let's, well, let's proceed. The solid fence I mentioned, no backing onto Route 19, are, are really the only two uh, conditions right now, I think. Yeah, what about so the fence in the back? Wasn't there a discussion on the size of that fence and its opacity? It's six feet is in the order. Six feet. We have a uh, okay. we have a uh, six foot privacy fence requirement mm -hmm. in the back, anyways. Uh, we're talking about the ten foot front fence. I understand. I think, as being the uh, the opaque fence, completely okay, right. opaque fence in the front and in the gate, uh, also. So I think those are the. I don't think we have to worry about the back. You said completely opaque. I think I said solid here. Solids of, yeah, it's, I was just yeah, referring to a passage. You have to help me write this. So. Okay. Yep, so we'll, we'll get it. Uh, solid's going to be 
Well, they're going to have gaps. So. Okay. And also the uh, the big pieces, big piece. <laughs> yeah, so if you could get us the tonnage, maybe oh, find, that's right. the tonnage tell us some way to do some, that. Some, some requirement that he can impose upon himself so that the largest rig is not exposed. Right. Okay. And uh, then, just so you know, we're gonna you're gonna need to do the turning radiuses to show that you can do what you said you can do. So, um, you, you want them on that plan? No, no. They just when we get to the site plan, that'll be a sticking point for sure. It, if, if by some chance, Bruce, uh, they, these turning radii cannot fit on this site plan, then it would be a reason for denial because he's, so council understands. He's he said that uh, he said that he can do it. So these things will come back to us then? These next will all month? be placed as a contingency uh, for next week's agenda review meeting. These three items. Uh, and that'll be part of the, uh, that'll all be part of the motion. The additional conditions will be part of the motion. The descriptive term for the fence, the fence in the front, is it opaque or solid? Solid is what I believe it should be. Solid. What does solid mean to us? Can't see through. Plastic, wood, wood. Something, Something that's an actual. Yeah. It, it's, it's not like a wire fence. You can no see through it all. You can't see through it at all. No, no strands, right? Okay. So that effectively would be opaque, but it's. But the, I think that's a stronger term in my view. Saying that solid, solid seems to me a, a better term. Okay. Is there anything else? Well, just we're talking neighbors. You know, I've re reached out to several of the business neighbors. Um, and tonight in the back of the room is Deborah Wiseman and her son Stephen um, from Bridges Sweeper Company. <coughs> Bruce was sent an email from <coughs> Jeff Doherty, who was at the public hearing meeting and came out and introduced himself to me after our part of that meeting was over. And I'll speak for you if you don't mind, and you can speak out. They both support this project as business neighbors to this piece of land. And if you'd like, I'll read. Oh, do they have a copy of this? Do. That was okay. sent to you. Okay. Okay. So I won't waste time reading that, but uh, if you have anything to add, that yes, as well. Yes, we, we look forward to having them. Can you come to the microphone, ma'am? Please. Yeah. But she's, no, she's, she's just being recorded. She's not the Which response there. Right there. Just as long as you can look toward that way. We won't say that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie Wiseman. I own Bridges Sweeper Service, which is right next door to the proposal that he has put in. We have no objections to it. We look forward to having the house torn down and having a new building put up. We've looked at that now for about, well, I've done it for seven years, eight years. So I think it's going to enhance the community. As far as the traffic goes, him being there is not going to create any, any more traffic. And ma'am, I appreciate what you're saying about that grade, but if you would like to come to my store and you can sit there for five minutes, you can see them fly by, the horns going, when N.A. is dropping kids off at, from school at AMCO, it's a nightmare. <clears throat> so PennDOT might be able to help us out there and maybe a yellow flashing light would work. But I really appreciated that. Any other questions for me? Okay, thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Anything else? I would like to know how many wells we get to worry about. Um, well, there are only three houses there, so it can't be any more than three. Yeah, I'm not sure. What, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure water is up there. I know that. I don't think it is. Yeah, but I'm not sure how he's going to impact the wells. This property has public everything. He's, he's talking about the, a, the, if, infla the infiltration. Right, the, if the oil ends up somehow in the water system. Well, well salt, God knows why. I can't believe they would salt that lot. <clears throat> why would you salt a gravel lot with track machines that don't need salt? It can't be any more than Thanks very much, Ralph. I, I think that concludes the discussion. It was a very fulsome discussion. Uh, we'll, if, if there's, there appears to be nothing more, we will proceed on to uh, item 
item four on the on the agenda. Number four, report on the composition of the implementable comprehensive plan steering committee as recommended by the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development and Town Planning Consultant, Pashek hyphen MTR. We've had uh, several discussions on this whole topic as we've uh, moved up to the uh, uh, achieving liftoff on this topic. We have a, uh, we've identified the, uh, a contractor to, uh, to perform the work on uh, putting the plan Same together, the implementable plan, implemental comprehensive plan, and uh, the, the purpose of the, the subject matter at hand is to identify the, the, the steering committee. We uh, have had discussions and with uh, among and between ourselves. There's uh, that with the help of uh, Mr. Pashak, who's uh, who's the expert. He uh, he felt that the that the that the steering committee should be composed of 13 to 15 members, including two council members, three planning commission members, one or two business persons, two or three representatives from institutions, including the school district, La Roche, and uh, 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 churches, and then three citizens at large, including representation from environmental groups, and the land use administrator, which is a Ex officio, that's, that would be uh, Bruce, and the town manager, uh, Toby. So uh, we, uh, I propose that we have a discussion as to who who council thinks ought to be. Uh, uh, we have we have some ideas, and maybe I'll propose. I'll speak first by proposing, with respect to the to the the two council members about the Kim, Kim and myself. I'm on the zoning committee. Would would make sense. Those two would be would represent uh, good representatives on how many committees are you on how no? many committees am i on yeah is, is that germane to the uh the council members here well you know you, you, you seem yes. to have a few more than i do what would you like to be on one of them yeah okay well I, well, the, well that's the that's the proposal i i, I understand what you're saying and uh I'm on the Planning Commission, and I'm on the MT, uh, the uh, MIDA, which is uh, extremely... MIDA. Aren't you on the EAC, too? The what? As a liaison. Uh, Kim, Kim is the... Uh, alternate liaison. Alternate liaison, that's right. But anyway, is there something in our charters that says you can only be on to? No. Yeah. Not us. Everybody else. Okay, well, anyway, I... That's the proposal. We there could, is something that says it should be equally spread out. Yeah. And then there's uh, three three planning commission members. Uh, those would be two to be determined. We thought that Dick, Dick, uh, uh, how does he pronounce his last name? Schnapp. 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 And uh, Ted Minard, who's the current chair. And then another person to be determined uh, uh, on the on the planning commission. The thought was, and uh, that Pashak thought that the, Mr. Pashak thought that the uh, planning commission is a logical place for people to, of that uh, discipline would, would, would have good, good input. Uh, two, we have one or two business persons. Now that we don't have, we really don't have a, a, any, any specific proposals to start the discussion. And then the, Two or three representatives from institutions who thought that the that the school district, uh, Mr. Shearer, could identify. Again, is that how he pronounces his name? Shearer. 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 He would keep identify someone from the North Allegheny School District to participate. And you want someone who's going to participate. That's a that's an important feature. You don't want somebody who's just named to it and then doesn't do anything. Uh, and then uh, on the La Roche, there's a there's a the finance director we thought would be a. Uh, a good person to consider, Bob Vogel. And uh, in terms of the churches, uh, there's a fellow that uh, uh, the pastor of the 
what is that, the Lutheran Church on Cumberland Road? Is that, is that the St. church? St. John's Angel? Lutheran. St. John's Lutheran. That's that is on Dean. Cumberland, right? Yes. A, a Pastor Dean. Pastor Bill, Bill Dean. Dean. D-I-E-H-M. -E right. However that's pronounced. I don't know the gentleman. But, okay. And then three citizens at large uh, representing environmental groups. We thought someone from the environmental uh, committee would, would, uh, would make sense. The... Uh, uh, and some names that were thrown out as possibilities, and again, it's up to the, up to us to ultimately vote on this. And uh, uh, but Jason Singer, Georgie Ann Lycar, uh and Christine Shipley, those are. Uh, Excuse me, if I might interrupt, I don't think they should be any candidates that are running for office. That's just my feeling. Who's running for office? Who's running for office? I'm saying I don't think you should choose anyone oh, okay. who's running for office. Okay, why, have we identified any such person yet? No, but I'm okay. saying as we're considering people, okay, right? right? Aren't we? Isn't that what yeah, we're doing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, okay. that's right. Why? Because I don't think we should get in political kind of things. Well, that may not that may not be an issue. I'm not sure. It I may agree. not be an issue, I, but I'm, I'm just sure. saying that's my thought. Okay, well, let me proceed then. I, I I understand your point. Then we, I already mentioned the. Uh, the land use administrator Bruce Betty and and Toby, the town manager. Uh, that's the. Uh, How did this large of a group become uh, brought up? How, How did Jim Paschik brought it up, and so did uh, Denny Puko from DCED. That's why I put it on the agenda that way because uh, they recommended having sectors. Does that seem like a large group to you? Well, they because said the seven of us have a problem sometimes getting anything done. Well, they said 13 to 15. You know, Pashik obviously is not here tonight, but uh, he's talked about it before. And well, he clearly endorsed that. He, he does. He and does. It, 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 it's a different, if I may, it's a different function than, than, than seven people on council. He's trying to get good like, cross sections yeah. the whole town. Now, other, th other things he said is uh, make sure that uh, it's not gender biased or biased in any other way, but he mentioned that specifically when he gave his proposal, whenever his proposal to council. So the, the idea is to keep, you know, make sure that the institutional sector is represented. And he's done a lot of these, and he understands where the ideas, we, all, we should be drawing ideas from so that it's not uh, lopsided toward one particular neighborhood or all residential folks or all business. That's why he came up with this cross-section of humanity. And he's done many of these. In fact, he was just recently hired to do another another one here. I can't remember. Do you remember what time that was? Someone mentioned he was just. Oh, a lot of them. But, but, but he's, he has a lot of background pine. pine. Uh, the, uh, you know, we've never gone through this ourselves. I'm not speaking as an expert in any sense, but, but they have to go out into the field, speak, seek information from citizens, uh, and, ha and have a lot of interface with. With, with, with these various representatives of the community. And uh, it, it's a pretty big job. Uh, it has to be spread out a little bit. How many people did he have in Pine? Do we know that? I don't know. No, no. Probably we, about, I would guess. We have done a few same. master plans. We have. I've been on one that uh, had as How many. How many have we done here? Well, have we well, ever followed any? We yes. followed the last one Absolutely. very closely. Because Absolutely. the last thing. We well, followed that's the last one very closely. Plan. We followed it very closely. Well, I think Steve has a question about it. I'm just reading through, you know, what we had initially 10, 12, 12 years ago or so now for the 10-year comprehensive plan. Uh, what we fought through over, uh, in particular, the, the, the Trader Horn rave site and uh, the original description of uh, even McCandless Crossing, I would not have called extremely accurate. Well, offhand, I remember talking about a town center, and I remember talking. I know it talks about the type of C5 zoning, which we, one of the one of the offspring of the comprehensive plan we did in 06, 05, was uh, uh, a traffic study, and it was spawned by originally by Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle wanted to put a, a get go. Uh, on uh, Pine Creek Road, where uh, the uh, Commonwealth First Commonwealth Bank is, and uh, they said, "They said, well, we're going to have to do a traffic study." We said, "Yeah, you better believe you're going to have to do a traffic study," and it was going to cost about ten thousand dollars. So uh, Bruce and I had recommended to council right about the same time we had to do a traffic study of the whole corridor to follow up on our comprehensive plan. 
So Giant Eagle coughed up their 10000 and we contributed 30000 for the general fund because the study took $40,000. And so that was, that was one of the first things that happened right out, right out of the gate. Right, but you bring up the town center. That's a perfect example of that. I know very few people who would call that clock a town center, which is what that's supposed to be, correct? Well, that's the center of the traditional neighborhood district because that went even one step beyond a town center. Town center can be a lot of things, but a traditional neighborhood district starts to define more. Which right, but I picture a town center as a place you can play fetch with a dog and throw frisbees in a football. Well, and, uh, small dogs, there's that small area. Yeah, I guess you could play yeah, fetch with a chihuahua. Well, that's, that's it, hang on, if I may for a second. Okay, go ahead. This is, the, 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 these are interesting discussions and, and, and valuable as far as they go, but remember what we're trying to do here is to identify members of the a forward-looking, implementable, comprehensive plan group, not a critique of what has happened in the past. There may be things to critique from the past, but now we're, and, and certainly those ought to be given some thought as, as, we, as we try to structure what, what, what's going forward. But, uh, but, but I, I like to try to keep us focused on what, the, uh, what, what we want to do as a forward-looking body. Right, and, and part, part of this is the steering committee isn't a voting committee, and it's not going to be what a majority of the steering committee feels is what's going to move ahead. What's going to move ahead is what what the community thinks. The steering committee is only there to give guidance and some direction. And to gather information from a broader membership of the community. Yeah, it, it's not going to be, it, it's, it's not going to be, a, we're not going to be voting. Uh, we're going to be giving guidance to the, uh, to passion and associates. So but this, but, to keep that in mind. But forming that is a necessary step to move forward. Right. We yes. don't want to get stalled and, and, and uh, in, 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 a, in a process of trying to set up a committee and really slow down the, act, the act, action that that, 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 that committee is to take. I think that's... It's something that needs to be done quickly. We need to get moving on this. We're already behind in the process just because of the process that we uh, took uh, to solicit the bids and, and do the reviews and all the, uh, and all of the uh, interviews that we went through. I was looking at this also, I'm hearing what Steve is saying, and um, a lot of it makes sense. I looked this up, it was in the Harvard Business Press, and it says it's the ideal group for making decisions, even though this group's just guiding, it's steering committee, I realize it's not making decisions, is seven. And an interesting fact is that every additional person decreases the effectiveness by 10%. So we have the optimal decision-making group here, but I think 13 to 15 is, is kind of big. Um, I, I don't I don't see if we we're looking for something representative, it seemed like one person from planning could represent all the people from planning. He could get their input. I, I don't think we need three people from planning. I think one from EAC is good, plus that keeps that balance. Planning environmental kind of keeps that balance. Two council members is fine. To me, I think we should throw out and say we want three or four community members. Who, who's interested, and we're given preference to some of these, and then see what we get, and then decide. I don't know that, see who sends in applications, and then we can decide on that. I don't, I don't it know. It seems odd that we've already picked people. I, that's what, I don't without. think that's a good idea. Those are, just, those, these are, well certainly, there's some names that are already picked by virtual. We, we haven't Bruce, talked to the people. And, uh, this, uh, these are, these are except for proposals to, to think about, but I would say that I don't think that seven, I understand what that Harvard uh, uh, journal, or whatever precisely what it was, says, but but uh, I certainly base a lot of my reliance upon the the, the guy who's, who's done these and, ha and has a major, an excellent rep representation uh, or, or a, a reputation uh, in this area. And Pashak is what you know. We didn't sit down, and go to a room somewhere and say, "Gee, we should have 12 people or 13 people." He's the one that said that. And I would, I would, I would like that. In fact, why don't you find out what did, what did, what did Franklin uh, or uh, Pine, Pine, Pine? I know the one I, I was on at least one of them, maybe two of them, but one of them had twenty-five. Well, that, that's, yeah, that's a little large, I think. But these the difference are, there was there were five communities doing a conference. But these are workers so who are supposed to go out and and gather information across a number of. If, if, if I think if you limited yourself to seven substantive areas. I think you'd be cutting yourself off from the 
from from the community information. Jim, Jim talked about it. He said it's seven in this case because it is not a decision making group. But the idea is to to be broad spectrum and inclusive, and to have. Uh, and he's found in his, his, his experience that over 15, and Puko said the same thing, and Puko has been the, uh, he's the fellow that works for, with DCED, he's a train planner, he was in Mercer County, county uh, representing the state and all the work that he's doing with the various comprehensive plan steering committee, uh, community committee comprehensive planning steering committees. They, they've come down, when I first heard it, uh, I thought 13 to 15 sounded too large too, but he made his case that the idea is to get the sectors involved. Well, then let's have less, and let's not have three planning commission members, then let's have more citizens. The, the, the thing about the planning commissioners is that they are, along with Bruce, driving the train. You vote, I mean, you drive ultimately, you own the railroad, but they're the ones that are gonna be huddling on a monthly basis about how's this going. How's the steering committee been doing, and so forth? So um, I think that's why he suggested that there be several. Well, uh, I would say I think nibbling at the edges of, of, of the proposal, I think I think is fine. I mean, it, it, I don't think I don't think that maybe you have a different impression. I that, that that the that Mr. Pashek, or P how does he pronounce Pashek. it? Pashek, uh, uh, said is there anything magical about three as opposed to two? But I don't think one was enough because you wanted, you know, maybe yeah. two. Maybe two is the right number. Yeah, maybe two and an alternate. Yeah, I mean, and uh, but but there's. Because uh, I'd rather get a more cross section of citizens. You know what I'm saying? As mm -hmm. opposed to because the one person, like the one person from the EAC, can hear what all the other EAC people have to say and then bring that. The same thing with um, the planning commission. You know, he can be the person who gets all the information from the planning commission and then go back to the planning commission. If you're set on this 13 to 15 number, which is fine, I think it's gonna be tough, but if you're set on that number, then I would like to see just more citizens from, you know. Who came up with the names that we're recommending, we recommended? I've been brainstorming. Talking to Bruce, to. I, uh, I talked. I talked to Bill as the zoning chairman because that's ultimately when this comes back from planning commission, it, it goes to whoever's in charge. Of well, it's on the planning the commission. I mean, you know, not, not the magic again about those. Right. Those are just people that we we, we, we observed that they were uh, one who I'm, I, I'm not. I don't have any particular and, relationship. And with. The answer to Steve, yeah. Jim asked us, could you please help have some names? I told him yes. Have any of these people even no. expressed interest at all? The only person that. Uh, in Bruce's absence, they keep things moving to see if he'd be even remotely interested. I called uh, Sister Candace, Candace in Tricasa, who's the president of La Roche. She's away. But uh, the administrative assistant over there, and Bruce uh, talked to uh, Bob Vogel, who's her finance director. I would say, well, if, if he's a good, a good representative from the uh, institutional community, that is a name. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the power to appoint, but I think, I think if, if we're to to try to name names in sectors is to help you move the process along and still have the appointment process that we put in place last year. That we, we get, again, the mix of having some people that we know are going to be workers, are going to contribute, that we, we have knowledge about, and then others that we may not that come out from an interview process. That, that's it right there. I mean, in answer to Steve's question, I think that, that none of this is set in stone. These are just starting position people names to come up with the starting position, who might who might fill it out. Uh, now some of them, as I've already said twice, I think, that if, if, if the uh, the land use administrator is is one of such person, then the guy sitting at the end of the table is is, uh, is would be involved as well as the town manager. But the three citizens at large, including representatives from the environmental group, well, I mean I think we got lots of flexibility there. Uh, it seemed as though that it was a good cross section yeah. of people and again, we have a substantive areas going. as well. Jim Pasha came up with the sectors. Yeah. I mean, they, they make sense, but yeah. he, he, he's the guy that said business, institutions, definitely wants a church person. And we said, oh, and he said, yes. Why? He said, I want their perspective in the community. They have lots of people that show up, have lots of discussions amongst themselves, among them in their church communities and in the, in the congregations. They talk, they have input. You can go to congregations and then come and then use those folks to help answer surveys. You because when the surveys go out, 
you beat the bushes everywhere you can, not just through electronic media, but through face-to-face. -face. Jim's coming to the first community today. He's going to bring an employee, and it would be nice to have at least some of these folks in place so that they're willing to talk to residents. They're going to have a set of questions to ask. So we, can, we can get going on this. So the, which, isn't Jim going to be... He, Jim's going to utilize the steering committees to... Uh, to gather information and, and perspectives of right. the community the, in a very broad sense. And review and information. And information. Sir? And review information and yeah. help to prioritize. So when you mix in the planning commission and, and the steering committee gets back to them and then the planning commission then gets back to you, you hear what's going on in the community. And if anyone else on council has other names, wouldn't they be able to put them up also? Well, you know, I wouldn't want to put anyone's name up unless they wanted to do the job. Why don't we just post them and see? Right. Well, I'm saying She's a suggestion. I, I'm not saying. Yeah, I still would. I wouldn't even suggest like my brother or my dad if I thought they'd want it until I asked them. Well, uh, leave it up to them. Really to bring step, up names. Leave it up to them to step forward. Right. Yeah, okay. But they have to have that opportunity. Yeah. Right. And if, and if these are just handed out, then yeah. they can't. No, well, I, don't I don't think, think anybody was suggesting we, we weren't. I agree. We, yeah, we weren't suggesting that, that that was not the purpose of this. This is sort of the generate, uh, sort of a talk piece. Okay. Uh, the, the, the groups that are up for grabs, so to speak, are up in the air, are the business area and the citizens at large. Everybody else sort of falls in place. The, the school uh, we, I still think we were thinking about the three planning commission members, too. Well, but, but I made the comment, yeah. if, 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 if they... So I mean, I am perfectly okay, I, as you said, I, I, I think two is plenty. I, th I think you need more than one to get the depth of experience from the planning commission, but you wouldn't necessarily need three. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything magical about that, but I, I, think, I think, in my judgment, I think two is a good number. I, I, I like the comment. We don't want to overload it with... A, I like more new people, new faces showing up instead of people who are already... We're on the job. On what, on the job. Just you know, if you're talking about three people from the planning commission or whatever. Well, he said two. The chairman did, and Tim Zachary said two. Maybe I ought to check with your colleagues and see if you can narrow it down to two, and then let's, we can move off of that one. Okay. Well, you mean just focus on that one? Now is two what do you think? Add a, yeah. add a f extra citizen. It's two? Two's okay well, with everybody? The citizens are in ranges. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Two's fine with me. Two's okay with everybody? Two's fine, yeah. All right. Fine, Toby, you make go. a note of that, please, so we don't lose track of it. Uh, the uh, the business persons. Uh, That's subject to interview, I would recommend. Yeah, well, let, let's let's talk about that a little bit. We, we, we thought, gee, you, you try to, you think, well, business persons, a big corporation, Lowe's, but, the, but we haven't had always a, a, a great uh, response from Lowe's in terms of oh, there are large corporations. A, a few things that we wanted them to do. You want somebody who can... This, I would make significant local. This person would have to live in McKinney. Right. Yeah. Right? yeah well, absolutely. And, and yeah. their right. business right. should be in McKinney. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I don't I think just, chain store is yeah. the right business That's person. That's what I'm thinking, too. Yeah. The, the, yeah. 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 Small Somebody brought business, up loads of discussion. No. I, I small business. Small businessman. I'm just, just talking about And I would think we should go with a big business and a small one. Shouldn't well, we? Well, that's so hard to do. Then what? Business is worth more than a million? Or I mean, how would you decide that? And then people got to prove that when they apply. That's going to be tough. Well, somebody who's a long, a long-term business. You got one vote for a developer, right? Yeah, developer in McKinnis or in North Hills. I'm sorry, Greg. A developer, yeah. A developer. That that would be the business person. Well, I wouldn't just have one. My recommendation: if you have a developer, there should be some other business person. That is a small business. I think it's, it should be at least one local yeah, small business owner. Mm -hmm. Like an owner of a, a stake in the town. hardware store, somebody with a hardware store, owns, a, hard, owns a restaurant, for right. example? Is that what you're thinking? I think and my suggestion would be to set guidelines because our appointment policy says the qualifications the council sets. I think part of what we're, we can do tonight is identify a business person. What do, we, what do you want? A, a small business owner? Definitely a McCandless resident. Your business is rooted here in McCandless. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the shout out you do on our website. Right, right. I like it. Yeah. I right. like it. Right. Say that again, Toby, so I can get it in the I don't know brain. if I can repeat that, but <laughs> it sounded I, I good. Was, it sounded I, good the first time you did it. A small business owner in McCandless is fine, but do we want to go with just? I mean, I don't know that the word small business owner. A local business owner, maybe. That's what but, I mean, local. That's right, right, because I, mean, I don't necessarily know that I care if the guy owns a million-dollar company or a 
hundred thousand right. dollar company. Change small to well, but you you would yeah. want right. to, uh, I think you'd want someone who has had a, a time in the community of sufficient uh, significance to to have uh, had a chance to understand and engage what the community might want to do. The point is that the, I don't think you'd want to get the necessarily a sole practitioner. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe would you not. want maybe a dentist? Maybe a dentist that's been my dentist to come for 40 years, and he's 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 Your lives. dentist may be the only one who Let's comes down. Let's see what we get, and then get. we can choose. Yeah. Right. right. The then whole idea is a business owner. Right. We may only get one. Okay. We may get a hundred, okay. and we can pick exactly what we yeah. want. You got twenty dentists. Well, you huh? want to right. see one of the things that can happen too. If you if you put out the shout, you put the shout out, you might get. Ten people that own businesses and say, "Well, gee, we got a lot to choose from there." Maybe a couple of them will end up being the citizens at large too. I mean, you just—I think you're going to have a shout out for the business people and the citizens at large, whatever number you set tonight. To I'm hearing a really reaction here on that. to the to the that, that we want to—I I would say a, a small to medium-sized business that's been around for a while. I don't think we should pick size. You don't want to pick the size. It's local. 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 And I think you're going to get into trouble. I think if you say we're looking for two representative from local institutions would be better. Because if you start saying we want somebody from La Roche and then Vincentian so may say, well, we want someone. And then another says, well, we want someone. And so I think if we just put that out there and then see what we get and then choose from those. I think How would you define institutions in that context then? Yeah. Well, I mean, it says it's, it's defined, schools. Yeah. Let us do a shout out. I think we should do a shout out. I was thinking about doing it this way, Bruce, uh, to all the institutions that we can think of. Yeah, and ask them if they want to a name, submit a name, fill an application. I asked Dr. Shear by telephone tag over the last few days to uh, see if he can come up with a name from, from North Allegheny. But it, it's going to require engagement from that person. That's one of the key criteria is that you got to be able to go to about a dozen meetings. Okay. And it's a little bit of homework. Well, what do we, what's our outcome keep, here? Keep from narrowing it down to see what, what our goal is to. Sort of a, revo a revised. Uh, we got two council members, two planning commission members, uh, one or two business people. We got to leave that, but just we're going to do a shout out on the website and then a shout out for how many citizens at large. And that's, that's the last flexible number. Kim Zachary suggested two institutional members. And I don't think we should have any names. I mean, yes, if I just you want to ask them yes. and point out to them that this is going to happen. Well, we're going to, we're going to do a shout out. We might as well do a direct. Do you need the institutional? Absolutely. They're part of, they're 28% sure. of our community. Absolutely. And Jim Pasha emphatically has told us that he thinks we should have people from Toby, the on that point, just a real quick point. Steve just observed, and I, and I, and I totally agree with him. If, if, if this is what he says, we don't want to have any proposed names on here at all when we send oh, it out. No, no, no. no. Right. It's a direct Evans, shot no. Out. No. no, no. We're going to give it. We'll say institutional folks, but I think we should contact the institutions, the leadership of the institutions. Send us somebody if you have somebody you want to recommend. Right. And does that That's what I do with Dr. Be a resident? Yes. They should of be course, resident. they should all be residents. They right. at, least, at least have to that's, work. That's what we want to, we want to establish. That. Preferably that's a right. resident. Well, what about that? Do we want to have them work here or live oh, no. here and work here? Both. They got I'd some rather both. The get, yeah, they got right. some here. Yeah, stake in the place. We've got enough people we can have. Yeah, that's exactly people. right. A stake and an exposure. All right. Yeah. Okay. But I'm also a big fan of uh, spreading the wealth as far as uh, res residents are concerned. But I think we should approach it the sim in a similar manner as we did the uh, AEC. I think we, or uh, EAC, I'm sorry, is we should have, a, if we have citizen representation, there should be no more than one from each ward. Ralph, that, Ralph I think you narrow, narrow down the talent pool. I think you narrow down the talent I'm going to ask you respectfully. I think you narrow down the talent pool in. I think this should be community-wide this time. I, I, I don't think that's a good way to go. Oh, he's saying no but more. It's, but then you end up with... Yeah. Well, when we pick, we can, if we have good qualified people, and the we say, look, we have yeah. so many, then we could just say, well, you these vote are on. all, we don't okay, want to You can just refuse to vote board. for everybody right. from the, yeah, from the same area. Everybody from the yeah. second yeah. ward or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but we all know that there are certain homeowners association or uh, people who, but there are cliques throughout the town who, uh, you know, groups of a half a dozen or more people 
who would, you know, gang up and all want to be, well, let's get on this, then we can exercise yeah, well, control over. Come, Ralph, if those people were to come forward, one of the criteria here is that they can't be single issue people. We certainly yeah. don't want people that have, and it was pointed out what some of the single issues may be, for example, an athletic association. We don't want somebody who wants baseball fields Everywhere. only. Yeah. yeah, and that's the only thing that we hear at every meeting is, hey, we don't have enough baseball fields. So that's the kind of thing that we don't want to have. And we can screen committee. those people. And, and yeah, we have to be careful how we screen them. <laughs> Okay. That's exactly. Me too, if you wouldn't mind. Can't. You have two there. Too. I can't get them. Go ahead. Put some. There you go. No. Boy. Just leave it. They must have been spot well just together. Right at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, work and live in McCandless. Uh, we are uh, putting out an announcement for a local business people, uh, institution, those who work in institutions who live in the canvas. Uh, we prefer, I, I don't know, how do you say publicly on the website, no single issue people need to apply? We can, we how do you can say that? Broad minded We can probably people. weed that out. Yeah, you need to be broad minded. Broad, broad, broad based opinions. Don't say, I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't either. No, I, yeah, I think it's necessary. Steve, just like Steve said, we you'll do. know when you see the resumes. Okay. True. Yeah. Right. True. Okay. And, uh, do we want resumes? So of course, we want something. We well, required for any other organization. We yeah, I know. Don't know the people then. One of the things I was trying to avoid was going through the process that we went through for all the other committees. That we went Problem through. is, we have a process, Bruce. We have a process. I know we do. It's Maybe just we so screw time ourselves, so to speak, but that's how it is. It's just very time consuming. Yeah. And uh, we've already, as I said, the project's already been delayed significantly. Well, yeah, you keep saying that. Time consuming. We need to delay it. Well, a ten-year comprehensive plan is well, that, three years old. That's, that's different. We got eighteen months. It's, 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 it's the starting. We're going to get it. Yeah, it'll, it'll, All right, let's go, Mr. Chairman. To lose a couple of weeks here or there. We should have. Okay, what are we? Are we? <laughs> Live and work in a community, local business owners, two from institutions. How many from the citizens at large? Do we have a number? Yeah. We ought to have uh, four slots. We ought to have somebody from the sanitary three. authority. Three, three, slot, three slots. But we dropped one from the planning commission, so we can add four. But we have a range from 13 to 15. Yeah. Kobe. Well, that range is, gets blocked by two council members and two planning commission members and land use administrator. Right. So we yeah. have yeah. ten slots. Am I copying right? Two, two four, five. five. Up to ten two, slots. Two, it's thirteen two, to fifteen. Six. We were trying to keep it at thirteen so that it wasn't unwieldy, but okay. Sanitary. We we don't have sanitary authority. What the, they're all appointed. I know, but should we have one as an, on this as an advisor? That's up to you. What did he? What, what After was all, they know where the shoreline is going and how let much shore is going to be Let them apply. Let them apply if they want to apply. As long as you're opening up, you don't know what you'll get. <clears throat> and we don't have to set it at 13 or 15. Or you can, That's the range. We can, you can we end can, up with 13, but you don't want to end up with more than 15, is what Pashik has told us rep right. repeatedly. He said it gets too unwieldy after 15. Well, there's nothing that says that a person might come forward who has experience on the sanitary, uh, the, right. the MTSA, right. that right. isn't currently on. I, 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 I don't think I'd want to have designate them as a coming from the MTSA itself, per se. I agree. I'm just, how about if I send an email out to council just to confirm what I what, what write up is going to be on? Just make sure we can I take a look at it, make some responses, okay. and then take another look okay. at it. Perfect. Okay. Now, are, is there anything else that, that the council wants to say? Because I'd like, if not, I wanted to to get the uh, public comment on the on the agenda items so we can move forward here at some reasonable time. Is that okay with everybody? Uh, in, in that case, I invite uh, comments from the public comments on agenda items from the. From those that are here. Items that are on the agenda. Comments on items that are on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, just sure. From agenda items, yes, sir. That's yeah, the idea. I have some item. I have some comments, but not on this. And that's then that then okay. we'll Thanks. save those for some other time or Correct. privately contact somebody. Okay. Are yours agenda items yes. too? Yeah. Okay, please go ahead then. 
Okay, just a comment. Remember, you got a five. You got a five-minute rule too. Remember that. Okay. I'm never a five minutes. Nah, you're very, very brief. You're a very loquacious <laughs> lady. I just have a lot to say. Uh, just request that you uh, observe some gender equity. That we have um, an equal you number of that. women. Uh, you said that, but I encourage it because um, I, I think that's important. Thanks. You know, if, if I may react to that, 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 that's one of the reasons. If you notice the people that come up and that's not one half. One half is difficult to, to come up with, but I, I agree completely with that. And uh, uh, maybe people from a little diversity. We, we've had, uh, we, we, I think we consciously wanted to have a, uh, a even, our, even our sort of white environment that we live in, uh, Mr., uh, I don't want to mention the man's name, but we had a guy in the Planning Commission who's, who's a, a person who's well qualified, but he was a, a person that's uh, a, an Afro-American person. We need to reach out, I think, and get some different people. And who, but I, I agree with your comment. Okay. Uh, any any other comments in, in the, from the from the gallery tonight? Well, that's hard to believe. Okay. Okay, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> enough. We <laughs> talked long enough. Right. Thank you, everybody. It was a great discussion. We got to say on the okay. steering committee. No, really the, well, I have nothing further. Nothing further from the from the, from the uh, zoning committee. Uh, I'm actually going to sneak out with Bruce for one minute. We want to take a five-minute break. Yeah, well, two listen, minutes. Two minutes. Two break. minutes. It'll stretch two minutes. to five. Two minutes, it may stretch to five. Not a bad idea. Whatever you have to do, do it. Joanne, who's going to be up first here? We know what we have to do. You guys are doing this. Chair, if you want to stretch the Manning is for all the first. She'll announce. Yeah, that's how you want it. Yes, I would like to. You know what I did? Hey, did you put the camera on? Did you put the camera on? Did you put the camera on? We're recording our right hand. Coming out of commercial now. They used to have intermissions in long We didn't have Ralph with his pronounced voice announce the the part two. Part two. Part three, whatever it is. We're going with snappy things. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call to order the Finance and Personnel Committee tonight. Number two, presentation of reports by Manning and the Peer and Anco Consulting, formerly Bogdan Group, on the second quarter in July 2017 investment performance of the town's uniform and non-uniform defined benefit pension plans. I'd like to ask David Immonen, would you come up and give us your report, please? Good evening. I think everyone has a copy of our presentation in the green and white. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the interest of time, I am going to go straight to the bottom line, also because the bottom line is pretty good. Um, and then I'll go back and address the, the outlook. Um, but um, after tab three, are the, the numbers and returns through June 30th? Um, if you look at page <clears throat> page 23 of 44 after tab 3, you'll see that the year-to-date return uh, was has been 9.51%, um, which is obviously a very strong return for half a year, considering the full the, the, you know your your uh, actual rate of return assumption per year is 7.25. Um, not only is it a good absolute return, but it's a return that's much stronger than yeah, benchmark. And I believe when um, Justin has a chance to provide his report, you'll see that it's very strong in comparison to uh, all of our peer groups as well. Um, the quarter uh, was a, a decent quarter, um, up 2.74, so a good absolute return. It was slightly better than... Um, our benchmark and a little bit better than the 50-50, a little bit more conservative benchmark. If you turn to tab six, that gives, it, it's an update through July 31st, and um, tab six starts new numbers, but if you look, just follow, go back to the tab and go to page four of 12, and you'll see that through July 31st, the year-to-date number improved from um, the June 30th number 
which was, if you, you, I just mentioned, was 9.51. As of July 31st, it's all the way up to 11.84%, which is a monthly return, a, month, a return for the month of 2.33%. Um, also, obviously, a very strong positive return. The benchmark return was 1.6%, so it adds another almost three quarters of a percent over the benchmark for the month of July. Um, so uh, I, I will also address the um, uh, the pie chart. This is on, as of June 30th on page 21 and 44 after tab three. Um, the asset allocation at the end of the quarter was about 30, just shy of 34 percent in U.S. equities and just over 13 percent in international equities for a combined equity allocation of uh, for about 47 percent equity. So um, what I would remark is that while the returns were strong, and I'll walk through why and how they were they were strong, um, we have been actively trimming our stock positions throughout that strength. We Since the end of the first quarter, we have sold about 6.6% .6 of the, uh, the of the information technology companies alone in the portfolio, as they've been the best performing stocks. For instance, we sold out of Apple altogether last month. We've trimmed Facebook, we've trimmed Amazon, um, and some other information technology companies that have done very well so far this year. So um, it, it's a, a an example of the risk management that we're looking at, and I'll walk through why that's important. So if you go back to tab. Tab 1, and start on page 11, and I'll, I'll give a, a brief preamble before this. Um, returns have been good so far this year, um, uh, but that doesn't necessarily make the challenge any, any easier going forward. And, uh, you know, any, anyone who's in, responsible for a pension plan has a number of very critical challenges. You're making, you've made promises to your police force, to your employees, that you will pay benefits for them in all throughout their retirement. And that's a very long time frame, a very long promise. Um, you've been very diligent as a community, as a government. Um, it is a very run, well-run pension plan. Um, it's it's well-funded, particularly compared to a lot of your peers. So you've been doing your job. You've been funding, making the funding contributions that are necessary. You've been doing the calculations that you need. If all of the assumptions in the in the calculations that are done for this plan work out, you should be able to fulfill those promises easily without overburdening your taxpayers. Um, however, the, the key one of the key assumptions in that is the rate of return assumption, um, which you know you have adopted a rate of return assumption of 7.25 percent and you've hired us as your manager to help you get that return over as many time periods as possible. Why that is a challenge is that, you know, if you think about it, um, if you look at the equity markets, the U.S. stocks have averaged a return of 9.5% since the 1920s. 9.5% 9 9 per year since the 1920s. Um, if you were to get the average stock return, that's fine. The issue, one of the issues is on the bond side of the portfolio, where yields have dropped to historic lows. And the best way of forecasting what your expected returns can be out of the bond market is to look at the current 10-year Treasury yield. I'll show you a graph later on that, that shows why that's so predictive, or how that has been so predictive of your future returns in the bond market. The problem is, is the 10-year Treasury yields at 2.3%. So just to do a little bit of math, if you, take, if you assume that you're going to get the average stock return over the next 10 years of 9.5%, and you have a 60% equity portfolio, 40% bond portfolio, but your bonds are only going to get 2.3%, which is the current yield, the, the math on that, 60% times 9.5 plus um, 40 percent times 2.3 comes out to a return assumption of 6.62 percent. So that's not quite meeting that that return assumption that you have. That return assumption is a long-term return assumption. So it's the, the liabilities of your pension plan 
I, I don't know specifically, but generally a, a plan of your size and of your health is 15, 16, 17 years long. And some, obviously, some of the new police officers that are accruing benefits under that, you know, until when they retire, they may be living 20 or 30 years beyond that. So there are liability, individual liabilities that are way out there. David, may I ask a very simple question, that, and because I think it's germane right now. Why does one, why does one buy, in light of what you just said, why does, the, why does an investment manager buy bonds at all? What are you trying to achieve by doing that? I know what part of the answer is, but what, what's your answer to that? You, you need liquidity and, and the stable source of assets to pay your ongoing benefits, <coughs> to, to, to cut the check, be able to cut the checks to, you know, monthly checks to your retirees. It's a liquidity and funding issue then. It is a liquidity and funding issue. And traditionally, bonds were able to provide you 4 or 5% fairly steadily. I, I, didn't mean, I don't want to distract you. From right. That's what I thought you were right. answering there. So, um, they were able to get you almost halfway to your return assumption, and the rest of the portfolio could do, the, the stocks could do the heavy lifting. So, um, so all I'm saying is that over the next five to ten year period, with the bond market starting where it is today, that's a big challenge to try to figure out how to get your portfolio to 7.25% over an intermediate time period. The other challenge is that stocks are relatively expensive right now. So this chart shows the, the stock market, um, you know, the, the S&P 500 since 1988, and it's simply illustrating that it's now, we're now in the ninth year since the end of the bear market in March of 2009. Um, that nine year period, almost nine year period, is currently the third longest bull market since World War II. Um, it's fast approaching the second longest. Um, and there's no magic formula. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know when it's going to end necessarily. And just because it's long doesn't necessarily mean it has to end. But it's an indicator that we're, you know, we need to be cautious at this stage of the, the markets. On page 12, this chart shows that the volatility has been extremely low in both the stock and the bond market. Um, all the, the, the VIX index is an indicator of volatility for the stock market. It's hit uh, since it's been since it's been measured back in night starting in 1990. Um, it's never been as low as it has been over the last several months. Um, it's an it's an it's an indicator that the market is relatively complacent that they do not seem to be exhibiting worry over the current state of affairs. Um, that's that can last a while, but it is an indicator that. Volatility could rear its head and, and spike up quite a bit. And usually volatility, when stock prices are high, is not necessarily a good thing. I appreciate this lesson on investment. Um, but I, and maybe it's just me, but all I really want to know is, how are you comparing to other investment firms? Whatever the market does, our decision, if I understand this correctly, is do we invest, have you invest our money or someone else? So comparing with what the market is doing, to me it seems like what we really want to know or what I want to know is how you're comparing against these other, because if the market's bad everywhere and you're not doing well, well then no one's doing well, so that's fine. But if everybody's doing well and you're not doing well, then that's the problem. So I appreciate all of these things that you're telling us, but I guess, isn't that if, what we want to know? If, if you would let me, I'll try to be fairly quick with it, but okay. I, I'm trying to differentiate okay. what we're trying to do and how we're trying to help you meet your objective and why we feel that's different than the way a lot of other managers do. The, how we've compared, how we've done, and how we compare against other managers is already fact, and, and Justin will lay that out. I've already, I've already told you, so far this year we've done very well. Mm -hmm. um, yes. uh, you know, we are making, we, un, we understand that we're, we're working through some prior time periods that were difficult, and we appreciate the patience that you're showing and to allow us to do that, and, and Justin's report the last time recommended that you continue to have patience with us. But I wanna, I, I think it's important to understand that on this page particularly, this is the indicator where stocks is showing that stocks are expensive. By several, we, we chose several different measures using price to book, price to earnings, and price to sales. Stocks are relatively expensive. The issue is when stocks are expensive, 
your future returns are generally less, you, your expected returns in the future have to be downgraded from the average. I already said the average is 9.5%, and even expecting the average return doesn't quite get you to your, actu your actual rate of return assumption. And I'm, I'm trying to lay out the, 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 the lay of the land right now is that it's going to be difficult in the stock market to get average returns over the, the next five to 10 years. Usually, and the, the reason that is, is because when stocks are expensive, at some point, it, it's an increasing likelihood that you'll have a significant pullback in the stock market. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know how big it's going to be, but certainly a 10% uh, correction or a 20% bear market is something that gets increasingly likely as stocks get more and more expensive. So what you're telling us is that it won't but be we'll likely that we meet our goal? Is that I'm, what you're I'm, saying? I'm laying understand? out that it's going to be challenging to get your goal okay. and that, that you, it, I think it's important that you, um, whether you're, it, you know, that, that you're with a manager who is cognizant and is, is directly facing those those key risks to your pension plan. That's what we've tried to do throughout our history. That is why I believe you hired us in the first place, because how well we managed the 99-2000 tech wreck and the foresight we had to be prepared for that, despite the pain that it cost us with our clients in the late 90s when we underperformed everyone else, like we have in, in the recent time period here. This chart here, for those of you who have been with us a, a long time and have been to some of our seminars and some of our presentations, I hope I try to sneak it in occasionally when our, with our meetings. We call this our parallelogram. Um, this illustrates, it's page uh, 15. 15 of 44. The, the, the green line illustrates the, the behavior of the market in a bear market as prices are going down, a recovery, and, and the end of the recovery or the bull market. And the gray line is how we expect our portfolio to perform or to behave in those kinds of markets. As prices are going down, the gray line is showing you that we are going to be increasing our <coughs> risk position. We're going to be increasing generally the equity allocation of the portfolio as prices go down. As they, get de they go down, prices are cheaper and future return expectations can get higher. At some point, the, the recovery turns around, and at some point in that recovery, prices start to get to a point where it's harder and harder to find individual stocks that meet our criteria. And incrementally, analysts will be stepping to the plate saying, okay, it's time to sell this stock. It's met our, our fair value. Um, and and the, generally speaking, the equity allocation and the risk of the portfolio will start to come down. I'm taking the time to, do, to show you this because I think it's important to realize what we're doing in the portfolio. We're doing exactly what we've said we would do, which is to, we're, we believe that we're, we're seeing signs that stocks are getting, the stocks with very good discounts, with a, a prices that we think are appropriate to meet a 7.5% or better kind of return assumption, are getting harder and harder to find. And our equity allocation is coming down. Um, in general, what we've, where we've had success so far this year is, is basically this year, and I would, I would argue back to the beginning of 2016, um, for a long time we've been saying that the economy would be a low-growth economy, and that in a low-growth economy it's important to find stocks that can grow even if the economy is not growing, that have strong secular tailwinds behind them. We have a portfolio that has a lot of aspects of that in the stocks that we own. A very heavy uh, information technology exposure, uh, consumer discretionary, where we own companies that are generally selling goods in some of the faster growing economies of the emerging markets and, and, and things like that. Um, those kinds of stocks have been begun to be rewarded over the last year and a half. We also do not have very much in cyclical sectors. We're eight years into the cycle. It, you know, it, we believe that cyclical uh, kinds of companies are better to be owned at the beginning of the cycle than they are towards the end of the cycle. We do not have a lot of financials and industrial exposure. That the, was the subject of our earlier discussion this year. Um, with you know, the, the initial reaction of the Trump election was a significant spike in those kinds of companies as everyone got very excited about the growth prospects that could come out of a pro-growth Trump administration. 
Um, we, we were somewhat skeptical. We wanted to wait and see the proof that some of those um, um, pro-growth policies could be worked through Congress because they're very difficult and, and contentious, particularly with a government with a very, very high level of debt. Um, so our patience has been rewarded um, you know, with the initial, with the, uh, you know, other than the November and December time frame, um, those companies, those types of companies have really uh, leveled off and the kinds of companies that we own in the portfolio have really started to be rewarded. And that's primarily where we're getting the returns so far this year. On the bond side of the portfolio, which is obviously uh, you know, now more than 50% of the portfolio, um, you know, we're not particularly optimistic about getting strong returns out of bonds. We know that every dollar we put in bonds is a dollar that's probably not going to make your, in fact, almost certainly is not going to make your return assumption. But bonds do very well when the stock market falls. Um, they're, they're relatively safe. They can be a source of liquidity should stock prices fall so that we can move in and buy more stocks at lower prices. Also, when interest rates move up, that can be a good thing for a pension plan because the higher the interest rate used for calculating future liabilities, the lower the, future, the, the, the present value of the liabilities are when you're looking at your funding. However, interest rates moving up are not good for investments in bonds. So our goal, while we, we, don't, we expect interest rates to continue to move up, we don't expect it to be a sharp move up, but you know, probably gradually. But if some of these pro-growth policies get through, and, and um, we don't think they're dead, um, there could be a significant spike up in inflation, and there could be a, an inflation scare that could make the bond market move up a significant notch in, in, in its interest rates which means the price of the bonds that you own are, could fall. So what we've been doing for the last several years is building a bond portfolio that we think addresses that risk, that would allow your portfolio to benefit from the higher interest rates because the liability calculation would go down, but not have your assets take a permanent, you know, the, the bond portion of your assets take a permanent hit. So we've been owning relatively short duration bonds in the bond portion of the portfolio. Sometime that has hurt us because we've been we've hold, been holding those shorter bonds for the last three or four years, and interest rates had continued to fall. So that was a part of why our performance in 2014, 2015 lagged, was because the, that bond position wasn't working out quite as well yet. Interest rates have started moving up. We we continue to believe that that's a risk management position that benefits your portfolio. So. Um, you know, I, I believe what we've done, we're, what we are continue to do is trying to figure out how to get you through what could be a difficult time period by being very selective in the stocks that we own, not owning stocks that we think are overvalued, and being flexible enough and using our process to allow us to reduce your equity exposure when, as stocks get more and more expensive so that we can be in a good position when that correction occurs to step in when we think future returns are better, where it's going to be a lot easier to get that 7 plus percent return and take advantage of that opportunity when it comes. Um, I, have, I realize how difficult it is to kind of assess performance over, long, over rolling time periods and things, so I've, done, I've included a couple of charts that I think are helpful with that. I'll, I'll show them to you quickly if you turn to tab 6. If you go to page 12 of 12 and then go to the next page, this doesn't have a, a page number on it. The chart that looks like this. And I, I just think this is helpful. To, it's a growth of the dollar chart that looks at, I believe it's um, you know, starting at, if, if you invested $100 at the inception of your account with us, and there, it's just investment returns. It does not. It takes out all any of your the, the cash flows that came in or out of the portfolio. But if you invested $100 in in our portfolio, and if you invested $100 in the benchmark, how would, they both would have grown over time. And what you can see is that over time, the Manning and Appear portfolio has distanced itself from the benchmark. But it's not always 
you know, it, it's not always getting wider and wider. There are time periods where we have setbacks. When those lines get closer, that means we've, we've gone through a period where we have not beaten the benchmark and the bench, benchmark has caught up a bit. But I think it also illustrates where we are in the last three years, which is that the, the three-year performance is really the, 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 what is most troubling to everyone that looks at our performance because it's very, very low in its peer group rankings and it's, it's well behind its benchmark. But you can see that as of in 2014, in the middle of 2014, we reached about the peak of our, the distance between us and the benchmark. And then our performance leveled off and fell back a bit. You'll also see that the benchmark's performance, i.e. the market's performance, also started leveling off. It, didn't, it wasn't like the market kept screaming upward. Both our portfolio and the market kind of leveled off for a period of time there. We, we, leveled, we, be, we pulled back a little bit earlier than the market, and then um, you know, throughout from mid-2014 to about early 2015, that those lines started to narrow. Then they started to widen again, and with just the exception of this notch here right, at the, the, um, right around the election, um, you know, they narrowed again, but we're, since then the, the, the lines are starting to spread apart again very nicely. I just think it's visually appealing to see this and kind of grab it from a, from a big picture. If you just look at the three year period and you compare how far apart the lines are today versus how far apart they were three years ago, they were farther apart three years ago. So that's indicating that three year period is negative. But it's not the only time that that's ever happened and yet we've still over time been able to continue to create an advantage over the markets. I also created a chart that I, I sent to Council individually after our first quarter meeting that I thought might be helpful as well. And this is just a visual representation quarter by quarter of the last five years of our performance relative to the benchmark with the quarters where we beat the benchmark in green and the quarters where we fell we were behind the benchmark in red. We already have it, right? Okay, yeah. I, I wasn't yeah. sure if it got right. included in the package or not. So, and this is your benchmark. This is this is our this is our benchmark. It's your, it's your benchmark. Yes. Okay. Um, but what you can see, what what this illustrates partly is that, you know, it, it was a defined period from mid 2014 um, through the through. Um, really the, the third quarter of 2015, so four out of five quarters in a row were, were, were very poor relative to the benchmark. Um, some of those issues we've addressed. Um, we did not feel like we executed well in the energy space. Um, we will we admit that. Some of that performance, as I mentioned before, was because interest rates were falling and we had already built a low interest rate exposure in the bond portion of the portfolio, so we were underperforming in the bonds. Um, but we were we believe that that was a position that we stand behind. We believe that is you know a, a place that you need to be to protect yourselves from these historically low interest rates and the possibility that they could begin moving up. Since that third quarter of 2015, um, there were two quarters of mild underperformance, uh, a quarter of mild outperformance, a very good quarter. The fourth quarter of 2016, which admittedly was was very difficult but a very quick rebound so far this year, and if you add the July number, it's, uh, you know, so far this quarter is another three quarters of a percent over its benchmark. What I, also, what I think this also helps is if you draw a line here as of, of 6-30-2014, that's the three-year period that we're looking at today. So every quarter that I come in here to report to you is going to be the three year and the five year and the 10 year rolling numbers are not going to just reflect this most recent quarter being added on, but the quarter that was dropped off. So as we start reporting this third quarter later this year, it should look much better on a three year rolling basis just because you're, we're going to be dropping off a minus 1.75 uh, you know, relative underperformance from the back end of the third quarter number. So, you know. The, the third quarter, the three-year number is going to get better. But that's, that's really you know, irrelevant. What we need to focus on is where are we going from today? And, and you know, are you with a manager that has proven, that has shown 
a long time period and a good track record of managing the risks that you face in the pension plan. And um, I believe we've done that, uh, as Justin pointed out very uh, kindly at the last meeting. You know, our since inception numbers have beaten that 7.25% return. They've been above median versus our peers, and they've beaten the benchmark. Um, we, I can't promise that I'll be able to come in here every quarter and we'll have strong returns on all measures. But I can promise you that we are looking out for what we think are the biggest risks out there and finding ways to put the portfolio where we think it needs to be to position ourselves to meet your objectives. So I appreciate your patience and, and um, I also want to uh, let you know that you know, at the last meeting it was requested that we take a look at your fees and um, we have not looked at the fees in a long time. The, the account has grown significantly since inception. So we, were, we are able to offer a fee discount from where you have been um, so far. Your, your existing fee is 0.7% uh, or 70 basis points on the first $3 million of assets and 0.65% on assets over that amount. For, you know, if we had a $15 million portfolio, that's an, an aggregate of, a, or an average of about 0.66, 0.67% um, on, on the total fund. What we're willing to offer to you is to drop the 70 basis points on the first three million and actually move uh, uh, create a new tier that says we'll charge you 65 basis points or 0.65% on the first 10 million and 0.6% on assets over that. So um, the last, the, you know, the, 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 between 10 million and 15 million, you're going to be charged only 0.6% instead of 0.65 as you are currently uh, for an, an, aver uh, an average percentage fee of 0.63, so down about um, you know, four percent from pre from prior fees. You can send us something on that. I can do that. Yeah. So I hope that helps, and I very much appreciate the patience that you've shown. I hope to be able to continue to come in and give you great, uh, great returns. But um, frankly, so far this year, it has been kind of the Goldilocks scenario. We've been able to deliver returns at the you know through J July thirty first almost 12% returns, which are about 90% of the equity market's uh, return for the year with a portfolio that has less than half of exposure to equity. So almost the full market's return with half the risk. We're not going to be able to do that very often. Um, I, I can't promise that, that we can continue that, but so far it has been a great position to be in because we feel comfortable that we're capturing the upside of the market, getting you the returns you need, but positioning ourselves for potential difficulties down the road. Okay. Any, questions? Any questions? When that uh, nitwit over in North Korea lobs a bomb onto Guam, where do our stocks go? They will likely go down. Um, but, and, and we can't predict that sort of thing. Those kinds of risks are always out there. It does seem like they're more elevated these days than ever before, but um, you know, I've only been in the market for 25 years. I think we've seen some really bad things before. Um, all we can say is that you know, if those kinds of events will cause the market to fall, how far they fall often has to do with the conditions in the market going into that. We're seeing conditions that say stock prices are high, expectations are relatively high by a lot of measures since the election, expectations have gone to much higher levels, consumer confidence surveys, business manager surveys, bull bear market surveys. Everyone is very optimistic about what's going to happen going forward. Yet the underlying economics have not improved a whole lot. So um, I liken it to going from the three meter platform to the 10 meter platform. The markets always have a difficult, the markets and the economy and the governments have a very difficult um, dance to do to try, they, they have a very difficult dive to do to maneuver through a what could be a difficult market. But if you're on the three meter platform and you mess up a little bit, there's a splash, but it doesn't hurt that much. 
if you step up to the 10 meter platform, and I would, I, my, the analogy is that we are at the 10 meter platform now because stock prices are so high and expectations are so high that if there, there is an event that spooks people and says, okay, it's time to run for the cover, the magnitude of the downturn could be a lot larger. And that's why, that is one of the kinds of reasons why we think it's prudent to, as stock prices get higher and we're having difficulty finding stocks that meet our criteria, to start lowering the equity allocation using our time-tested process. Thank you. Okay. Any I other? assume we'd see the same results if the nitwit in the White House loved the bomb in North Korea. That's probably. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, David. We appreciate your okay. information. We appreciate your lowering the fee. <laughs> Very much yes, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Justin, would you like to give us your overview, overview please? Thank you. Dave covered a lot. Um, I think you got a sense of the portfolio positioning. So I will only cover two pages in this report since it's been a long evening. But I want to make two comments. The first on the fee reduction for Manning and Napier. Dave mentioned it is now effectively 63 basis points um, if approved by council. The median uh, balance manager fee uh, for a mandate between 10 and $25 million uh, is about 69 basis points. So you are at a below median fee with your investment manager for the strategy that you're running, so that they're running. Um, so below average fees, that is a good um, from a fiduciary standpoint, from uh, council's perspective. And then just one other comment. Uh, Dave mentioned a lot about moving more conservative in terms of asset allocation. That's the owning more bonds in the portfolio now. Um, just equity markets do seem elevated from our perspective as well and relative to historical norms. Yes, they can continue to run, uh, but we've only had one negative month uh, the S&P 500 has only had one negative month in the last 17 months. Um, so uh, a lot of us from whether it's Dave's position or our position, um, you know, in the industry are expecting at some point, uh, and, and it depends what the impetus is for it, but we are expecting uh, to see increased volatility and a higher risk of uh, perhaps a correction um, in the market at some point moving forward. So. They've sort of positioned your portfolio a little more defensive, I would say, than it has been, say, two years ago, where their equity allocation for you was 60, 65 percent. So uh, you're probably, relative to peers, much better um, suited to handle if we do have a correction with the way that they have positioned uh, your portfolio. So I mentioned I would only look at, at two pages, and then I do have a, the July update if you'd like to look at it, but on page nine, so this will be the, sort of the, and again, I'm in the, yeah, the quarterly report. So Dave touched on a lot of returns from a total fund perspective. There were questions about sort of relative uh, peer rankings, and also in addition, then we break out performance for each individual piece, such as the equity portfolios, uh, in the fixed income portfolio. So you can see the 2.79% for the quarter, so outperformed the benchmark slightly for the total fund policy index. And then you can see the public plan median in the second quarter, 2.95. So they did slightly underperform uh, the plan median return. A lot of that has to do, again, with that conservative so allocation. What's, excuse me, what, what's our, due to the fact that we're rich, we don't have page numbers. What page you want? Uh, it's page nine. Page nine, but we don't have any numbers. Can we just see your page so we can find it? Yeah. So. There you go. Yeah. How far down is that? Just so we'll be looking up. So Thank look you. for two pages. Both have a lot of numbers on them. And they'll be the first. Page. <laughs> That's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say at the top? It'll say <laughs> top points. right trailing comparative performance. Mm. Oh. Yeah. All of my pages. This I'm page right here. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Ours is in the back of the front. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ours, is, ours is like this. What he says is right this. Right, yeah. Oh, cuts it off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not, all right. We'll address that. Well, luckily we're only going to look at two pages. Um, <laughs> So at the very top, so total fund performance, again, for the quarter, 2.79. And Dave talked a lot about performance already. Total fund policy index, again, that's 50% equities, 50% fixed income, returning 2.56. It's about a quarter of a percent of outperformance. But then you'll notice relative to other public plans, as well as public plans with um, assets below $25 million, uh, slight underperformance. But then we look at that year to date. 9.5% uh, through the first uh, six months of the year in the top decile, so really outperforming a lot of uh, other plans uh, and well ahead of, of all benchmarks. So 9.5 versus 6.28 for the policy index and 7.6 for the median uh, public plan return. Uh, a lot of our performance this year, the strong outperformance for the plan in Manning and Napier, driven by that domestic equity portfolio. So if you look Go down a little bit on that page, 5.36% uh, in the second quarter versus 3% for the Russell 3000 index. And then year to date, you'll notice domestic equities up almost 18% uh, over double uh, the benchmarks, both the Russell 3000 and the S&P 500. Uh, Dave talked a lot about the, the, the positioning, what sectors have done well. Some of the sectors that they've been in have hurt you. In past quarters, they've certainly helped you um, it, over 2017. Uh, and then Dave mentioned that they are starting to trim some of that exposure. So we break out the international equities as well, traditionally about 10 to 15 percent of your portfolio. Year to date, 12.33 percent. You will see that these holdings have underperformed pretty dramatically over the last 12 months, however, for you. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. Uh, but if you go out trailing a little bit over, you know, longer term time periods, uh, but historically, you know, Manning has done pretty well in the international space, but like uh, domestic, they've, they've struggled a little bit in the last few years. But domestic equities have rebounded quite nicely, international equities not so much, and still from an absolute return standpoint, you know, 12.3% year to date. And then we have our fixed income performance. 1.26 for the quarter uh, on a relative basis to other fixed income portfolios. That was a good return. You will notice, and Dave talked about sort of their interest rate strategy, it's helped recently, and they are outperforming over recent time periods with fixed income. It has been a headwind over three and five years when yields or interest rates uh, were coming down. But again, if you look the far right on any of these sort of portfolio segments, um, and we'll stay with fixed income, Manning and Pier, four and a quarter percent since inception. That's outperforming the benchmark, which is the Barclays Aggregate Index. And they're also in the top sort of quartile for fixed income portfolios. Um, you know, international equities doesn't quite have the same uh, track record in terms of the length. Underperforming on that piece. And then you can see with the domestic equities, 11.83% per year. Uh, going back to the midpoint of 2003. So that's over 2.5% per year of outperformance. And you can see that equates to uh, sort of a top 20th percentile performance. Uh, and then you can see at the very top the total fund relative to your benchmarks and relative to what other uh, sort of the median public plan returns. So the fund, again, since inception has done well, three and five years, uh, certainly some underperformance and some issues. That's why we've been keeping a close eye on this portfolio. Well, I've been critical of uh, Manning at past meetings, uh, but certainly year to date, uh, the portfolio and the plan uh, as a whole is doing quite well. So then just on page 11, I'm sorry, two, jump ahead two pages to the written, just the written summary. Um, so I'm just gonna read a little bit from the, the first paragraph uh, you know, basically, you know, we covered a, a lot of this, but the total fund currently outperforms policy index returns over year to date, one year, uh, five year, and seven years, uh, but trails over three uh, in 10 year time periods. Uh, the, the fund has outperformed the policy for four of the last five quarters and is ranked in the top third of public plan 
sponsor peer group for four of the last six. Um, again, it was that fourth quarter last year that uh, really uh, was the one underperforming quarter recently that has really uh, caused some of the, the problems over a three-year time period when we look at returns. Um, and then longer term time period, slightly underperforming over 10 period, 10 year time period. But again, since inception, uh, doing well relative to other plans, uh, as well as the policy index. Um, so through the first six months of the year, uh, the total fund was outperforming by 3.24%. Uh, again, you did add to that in July, that outperformance. Uh, considering what we've seen, the rebound in the portfolio, um, you know, keep in mind the, the positioning, man and the peer is starting to get more conservative, um, and they've still been able to do uh, relatively well this year, not only compared to benchmarks, but also uh, other uh, pension investors. Uh, so at this time, the recommendation uh, is to continue to retain Manning and Napier um, you know, with all assets. And then there should be a one-page handout. Um, there's no page numbers on it to begin with, so it doesn't matter. But just for the month of July at the top, 2.13% return to the total police pension plan. So that is outperforming uh, the total fund policy index by... 0.72%, uh, and then you can see continued strength uh, with domestic equities up 4% for the month alone, uh, and 22.73% uh, over the year to date, and then slightly outperforming with fixed income. Uh, and I will point out, year to date, investment return on investment or investment gains for the plan, um, $1.63 million um, in the month of July alone. Uh, the plan added roughly uh, $318,000. So, uh, you know, you can go back up and look at the total fund updated through July, and you'll notice that, you know, recent now, one year outperforming the policy index by a percent. Again, I think Dave alluded to it will take time for that three-year uh, underperformance to change, still underperforming. Uh, but if we look at it, the five-year returns now, uh, just shy of 8% for the total fund, which again is in line with the policy index, uh, but considering a few quarters ago um, they were underperforming on that metric, uh, they have made some, some progress there. So I'll stop and, and see if there's any, any questions. I have a question. Yeah. The, uh, on, the, on, the, on the page with the verbiage, whatever that is. Yes. Okay. It seems a little puzzling to me when you were I mean, last at your last review. Manning and Pierre had, a, I guess, a, a sort of a, not a particularly good report card. But your, your phraseology here, where you say, "If performance does not continue to improve, diversification of assets away from the single manager approach with Manning and Pierre may be prudent." However, the retention of Manning and Pierre is recommended at this time. They're, they're doing reasonably well. In fact, good. The report card. They have a good report card. I mean, isn't that always true? I mean, I, what does that statement really add to your evaluation? If things go bad, then we, we ought to take a look at them. I mean, is that, is that, is that all you're well, saying? It, the, where we're at, <coughs> I think, a lot of these conversations is it's not necessarily over numbers. It's a philosophical and structural <coughs> question. That is, do you want one manager that has tactical asset allocation ability? Do you like the idea? But that's always been the case. Nothing's changed, right? I mean, isn't isn't that what we've been doing for years? That is the current structure. Yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, you know, what what I tried to lay out at prior meetings is that, you know, structurally there are changes that the plan could make. It doesn't mean that it's so. That's when it's, you know, that's why I say the diversification, and it's not related to whether it's a good quarter or a bad quarter per se. But yes, they had three consecutive years of benchmark underperformance. That is when a lot of plans start to take a hard look at a manager in what, terms of their performance. What's the, what's the key uh, point that differentiates them? The single manager or, the, or is what that single manager is doing? What differentiates them, or I'm sorry, uh, Manning and Pierre, Manning and Pierre negative opinion uh, the last evaluation, better opinion now, but you seem to be uh, making a statement that that I interpreted as 
as uh, uh, as negative of their performance, you're saying, watch out, this could happen. What well, could There's all kinds of things that could happen, right? Well, I, I thought his negative uh, uh, opinion was only res with respect to international. It was uh, domestic equities were always strong. Well, I'm reading what uh, I'm talking about. Yeah. This piece of paper tonight. Okay, all I'm the talking about the conclusions and recommendations. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it says what it says. I guess I. In the manner of speaking, it, he's hedging his bet. But is, is that is that all it is? Just keep observing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it looks like to me. Which is that, the, right right the coin of phrase, yeah. Yeah, you got right at it. Okay, I, I, I understand. You sure? Well, unless you want to say more about it, I, yeah. I mean, why? why? The recommendation then is There's no changes. Stay right with now. Them. The recommendation yeah. is stay with the them same. and just yeah. keep, keep watching. Keep yeah. an eye. Okay. I would suggest to uh, get, make sure we get a third quarter report and then have the next meeting after that. I'm happy to attend as many, you know. Uh, I'd like to see a full third quarter report, personally, and then, and then probably okay. the next checkpoint would be November. This yes, is so we're just keeping on top of it. Okay. This is powers. That would be November? Yes. Okay. 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 Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much. Thanks, Justin. And, and Dave, thank you. Thanks, Dave, from before. Okay. So okay. I assume that means we're going to take his recommendation and, and go with that. Are we agreed on that? Yes, yes no, I agree. No one I has any other that, questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on to number three. Uh, I'd like Reed to review the town's second quarter financial report, please. Um, in Council's folder was the uh, second quarter financial report. I uh, just wanted to note that report is generated now from our accounting software. Uh, our new accounting assistant Ashley dove right into it and got the training she needed. Um, so if there are any comments or uh, suggestions for ways to improve that, uh, I think one of them might be the, uh, the type. Uh, make it a little larger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when you start, print it and then scan start. it, and then <laughs> it uh, gets real blurry. Yeah. So uh, we'll definitely do something with that. We'll also add page mind. numbers to it. Jeez, that on the computer, it was hard. Yes, that's the financial report. Um, so the, memo, the memo pretty much calls out any uh, items that I thought may be of interest. Uh, in general, we are tracking well with budget and compared to prior years. So if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to ask you. Let me make sure that I understand. When it says total, the totals here where it says actual percentage of budget, which I love, and then I'm looking at these totals just so I understand the grand totals, I have it on the computer, the grand totals of the in, all of the intake. All right, here, let's do total it's revenue. On the back total of revenue, okay. Total revenue. Um, the last column is percent, so that means as of the end of six months, our total revenue, we had 42% of our total revenue collected. 42% of what we budgeted, we have okay. realized. Should and it be 50? No, as no. a comparison, no, because our taxes come in heavier in uh, August. Or, okay. Yeah, okay. real estate taxes okay. are rolling in no, real heavy. Right okay, all right, yeah, we just paid them. That's but Kim, right. a good comparator is the, uh, the column, uh, just as one example, the percentage we were, where we were at this time in 2016 was 41, just under 41%. Which is, again, those numbers are typical. 41%, okay. 42, 43%. Right, I see. And then the other place, which I can't find, which was up the expenditures, it looks like we were under 50% too on Correct. expenditures. Which is always good. That again varies, there, okay. especially with the capital purchases. They may occur early in the year, may occur late in the year. Okay. Right. Okay. Both are good numbers, though. Okay. Just making sure that I understood that. The tracking one. And uh, if you think of anything you want to see that uh, might add to this, uh, please do let me know and get that further. Thank you. Any other questions for Reed? While he's up there. Yeah, I, I have another one for you, Reed, while you're up there. Um, Recommendation that a resolution be adopted authorizing the temporary investment of the town funds by the town manager and the assistant town manager and to make transfers of said deposited funds 
from and to accounts only in the name of and owned by the town of McCandless. And again, we're going to... Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been utilizing uh, FMC, Financial Northeastern Corporations, for, it's my understanding, uh, at least 25 years, uh, certainly in the entire time I've been here, because um, they uh, scan the, uh, the total market for CDs and make recommendations. Uh, they recently contracted with Pershing LLC to be the custodian of these CDs, and uh, Pershing has asked that we uh, execute a resolution. Um, and uh, so we've updated our resolution uh, to add signatures to it for Toby and myself, um, because just uh, having positions is not sufficient for Pershing. So by passing this resolution, we will then be able to execute uh, Pershing's resolution. Toby and I will be able to sign that, and then we can uh, invest, continue investing with uh, FMC. And that resolution is included in our packet, right? Yes, it was actually drafted by the town of Toby. So nothing's really changing. Nothing's we have changing a at different all. investment company yes. that wants things done a little differently. It's the same people one providing us with the investment, different with the CD guidance, but we have somebody else actually handling the CD transactions. And this is how it's always done. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's never been any different. No, right. There's not any alternatives. No. There's a list of things they're allowed to buy and. Certificates of deposit is one. All we're buying, yeah, and all we're doing is purchasing CDs of no more than three years. No. That's easy. Okay. Any other questions on that? Thanks, Rach. <coughs> okay, and number five. Uh, this is a notification. The town has received three applications for the vacancy on the McCandless Township Sanitary Authority. And you do have those um, resumes in your packet, in your brown, brown if you, if in that you, brown envelope. If you had a chance to look at them, would you uh, want us to schedule interviews for all three and next week? Keep the that process moving. Probably we should think so, yeah. to have that done and that. Oh, that's uh, usually our pretty big meeting. We have ten minute interviews that we do them again. Or? Yeah, that's the long, that's that's the really long meeting. meeting. Should we do that's it after? Long meeting. We could do it after business meeting. Business, business meeting is usually much shorter. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be better mm -hmm. after the business meeting. Sounds good. Okay. Any other question on that? Is everybody three, okay with that? Three candidates still. Right, just right. three. Everyone okay with having the interviews after the business yeah, meeting? Yeah, I agree. I have no problem. Okay. Um, seminars and conferences, we have. Um, the COG dinner, September 21st, and if you are going to it, you need to uh, let Marie know so that she can make reservations. And then the conference at Seven Springs is September 28th through October 1st, and again, you need to let Marie know. What's the date of the COG dinner again, please? COG dinner, September 21st. <clears throat> and that, that will be right at the... Um, Church by Passament, the new church. The, the, Greek, the Greek Orthodox Church. Greek Orthodox Church. Okay. And what's the date of the, of the Seven thing? Springs is September twenty eighth through October first. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Are there any public comments? Oh, we lost everybody. <laughs> everybody got tired of listening to us. Well, I'm listening. I'm you're still there. That's good. Don't miss the opportunity. Okay. Okay. Everyone okay? Okay. And number eight, I move to enter into executive session regarding collective bargaining and potential litigation. You need a second. Second. A second. We have a vote on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 David. Aye. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, guys.